Awesome.
let's hear that funky ass shit again.
What is up, Super Fam and Bro Vengers alike? And of course, we can't forget about our Bro Viren fam that is with us tonight. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day. I almost said Happy Willy Wednesday, but it's Thursday. It's Book Club Day. It's from Watch It or Reader Day. And oh boy, am I a, am I a reader? Man, let me tell you about, you know what? I'm going to relax, but I'm just going to let you know that I am at about a 10,000 when it comes to the first six chapters of this book, okay? I'm going to try to be as calm as I can be, but I am very excited about the about the contents of this book right here. I'm not gonna, I'm I'm very excited to talk about the contents of this book. What we already talked about the earlier, which I love, and the prologue, which we all know that I loved because I did the prologue for uh, episode zero, part one. And now that we are here with episode oh, episode one, yo, of our from Watch It a Reader series, doing going over these first six chapters, I am truly ecstatic. To, to cover all of the things that we will be covering today. I hope all of you guys are having a fantastic day indeed, because I know that I've been having a good day, good week. It's been a long week. It's been a long day. But other than that, whew, other than that, though, I'm excited. I'm excited, yo. I, I, I I almost kept I almost kept going in the story. I'm not gonna lie to you. So but I didn't. I didn't. I, I stopped myself where I was at in chapter six. So good. Chapter six. Just just yes. Everything that I read, I had a good time with it. So we're gonna get into all the nitty gritty uh things, of course just in a moment but before we do if you guys haven't already make sure you follow us on social media at marvel bros to stay up to date with all things marvel and everything pop culture uh and you can also follow me on social media at sensei finito to stay up to date with all things that i be covering all my thoughts theories and opinions on different things there's a wide variety of things that i talk about and go over and, and cover uh on my tiktok account and then you can see uh, all of the marvel bros content on the tiktok uh channel there uh gonna be having that up there more soon um and then of course you know we got those weekly podcasts going up on wherever you get your podcast so if you go on your, your lovely little spotify uh and jump on there uh you'll be able to see marvel bros in there and then i'm i'm actually hoping to take all of the wheel of time stuff that we have done over the course of how long we've been doing wheel of content wheel of ooh, wheel of content i like that uh the wheel of content is actually beautiful and i'm going to steal that and i'm actually going to use that in my business stuff because that was crazy that i just i just connected so many dots right now that's my, that's my bad uh let me just let me just write that down real quick so i can come back to that note later um but what I was saying is I'm hoping to uh, make a Wheel of Time podcast where we take all of the content that we have from Wheel of Time and put it on that Watt Bros podcast is what I'm thinking of uh, calling it. You know what I mean? So having Watt Bros as a podcast and on that podcast, you'd literally be able to hear everything from when me and Battery were doing it uh, for season one to now where it's, you know, just me and your me and y'all. Uh, and so, you know, it's going to be a really good vibe for that. I'm hoping to do that. I don't know when that'll be going on, but it should be happening sometime in the near future. But with all that being said, we're going to jump into chat and see how everyone is doing today. Let me know in the chat if you guys are excited to get into this Wheel of Time content. Talking about the eye of the world, book one, baby. Let me get a one in the chat if you guys are joining us in this book club and, and actually did read chapters one through six with us uh if you did not it's okay i understand i was supposed to do this last night but ya boy <sighs> ya boy just yeah i i wasn't done reading i wasn't done reading i had a really late meeting so i had to i had to get that stuff going and handled um but now we, we next week and and every foreseeable week as long as we're doing this uh, book club Wheel of Time stuff, thank you so much, um, will be on Wednesdays. Wheelie Wednesdays will always be Wheelie Wednesdays, but we'll be doing uh, a lot of different content when it comes to Wheelie Wednesday. Book club, of course, is going to stay book club until we're done with that, and then we'll go and do other things as well. Shake it up a bit. Uh, 
But yeah, today we're going to be doing our From Watcher to Reader series. That's episode one, technically, because we're actually starting the book. I know there's been two prologues now, but it kind of works because there's two prologues to this book. So look at that duality that we have there. Uh, I'm really excited to, to get it popping and get it going. Let's jump into chat and see how you guys are doing. Uh, oh, I forgot to put chat on here. There we go. Here we go. Boom. I love this thumbnail. Like a happy kid holding up a, a favorite Xmas present. Yo. Hey, I'm not going to lie. That's kind of how I feel about this book completely. Uh, after reading it, after going through it, it's just been a lovely ride so far. And I'm really excited to, to talk about it today with you guys. Hey, finally, some good content to keep me awake during my night shift. What's up with it, Jane? How you doing? Or Jane's, excuse me. Hello there. I hope everyone's doing good. Marisu, how you do? Jane, how you do too? Chat, how we feeling? Nice intro. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're early. Make an emergency tea. Yo, okay. So I was trying to, I was trying to like select the stream so I could go live at 615 on the dot, but Instead, I ended up clicking start broadcast instead of select broadcast. And then I saw that it started streaming and I was like, well, and the show must go on. So if I would have stopped it, I would have had to make a whole other stream. And there, it was just that. Yeah, no one had time for that. I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nice to see y'all. I hope everybody did their homework. There will be a test. Hey, I did do my homework, and I'm actually excited to take your test, Marisu. If you did make one, if you didn't make one, that's your new assignment. Because uh, what what are you? Uh, the teacher's assistant. You feel me? Your sensei's assistant. Oh shit, the sensei assistant. What is? I wonder if does that have a, a word for it? Is there a word for sensei? A sensei assistant or an assistant sensei? <laughs> the assistant to the sensei. <laughs> okay. Um. On what or the intro? That's a good question. Uh, let's, see, let's see. Let's see. I do love this intro, though. Thank you. It's honestly great. I love it. I love it. Uh, by the way, is there any interest here for Yu Yu Hakusho reactions? First season just dropped. Okay, I have not seen that anime. Is that the live action that's on Netflix that dropped already? I will actually do a... I will definitely check that out for sure. Because I didn't know... Uh, I had no idea that that was a thing. Ooh, the spine on that book is cracked. Yo, I'm man, this hmm. It was it's a good time. It's a good read. A long ass read too. Am I not tri like damn. I was like, "Damn." Well, I know the it differs in the in what type of book it is cuz if I had a smaller book, it would have been a a lot more pages, but it's still a, a shit ton of words. Okay, let me get out of the book because I'm about to start nerding out. I was about to start nerding out premature. That was almost a premature nerd, nerd, nerdaculation. Ooh, now that was spicy. Let me stop. Uh, FYI, the Dusty Wheel has one more episode. Then they're going on a six-month break? No more Wednesday conflicts after that? Oh... Oh, yep. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be good in the hood. So that means we can go back to our regularly scheduled six p.m.s uh, and get it cracking with that. That that sounds good, actually. I'm not gonna lie, and that works out really good for some other stuff that's going on. Um, yeah, let's get it go. Uh, big ones. I was kind of out of the loop on the dusty wheel. Is the whole show taking a break? Uh, I suppose Annis might take over. Uh, I watched a good ton of it. I watched a good, uh, wait. Yeah, I watched a good amount of it. I watched a good amount of the anime with my older brother, Never Finished. I want to watch the Netflix live action, definitely. Okay, that might be something that we do then. We might have to make that happen. I'm not going to lie. We might have to make that happen. Because I have not watched Yu Yu Hakusho, but I know that a lot of people like it, and I love going in blind to stuff. So I, I could watch that, and then we could do a full-blown like anime catch-up, either through the Discord or something or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that sounds good, actually. Um... Okay, 
So I'm happy you guys are doing good. I'm happy y'all are are chilling. Um, I'm hoping that you know we can keep these things going and keep them rocking, socking, and and no cock blocking. You know what I'm saying? I got my coffee. I do not have tea today. I have my coffee. Let me know what you guys are sipping on. If you're sipping on tea, what kind of tea? If you're sipping on coffee, what kind of coffee? This is a Colombian blend. <laughs> Yeah. Damn, that's hot. Okay. Hi. Yo, what's up with the Sharice? How y'all doing? Hello there. Hope you're having a good day today, today, today. Because I know that I am. Let's get that up there a little bit more. Bam. Now that's that's perfect. That's perfect right there. Um, Let me make sure... Uh, what's up, girl? Yeah, we should be good. If you guys are listening on headphones, please let me know if you can hear me in both of those headphones, please, and thank you. Darjeeling black tea to stay awake. Oh, Darjeeling. Black tea, you say? That sounds pretty. That sounds pretty spectacular. I'm not gonna lie to you. Is it, is it just straight tea? Do you got a little spot of crema with it? All right. I have notes, but they're in my brain. But my brain knows when I have notes. I look at them. So, like, I keep trying to pull up my notes, but they're all in my brain hole. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to take notes the next time. I was kind of rushing to I'm, – I'm not going to lie. I was I was kind of rushing to finish it, so I couldn't, like, take the notes that I wanted to take. But it was just there was a lot of moments that took me by surprise. So, I got some – I got a lot of mental notes, uh, a lot of them, and I'm ready to talk about them. If you guys are just now tuning in, we are talking about chapters one through six for – the wheel of time, the eye of the world. Let's get it started. So you guys already know that I am in love with the earlier and the prologue, as we kind of mentioned earlier in the, in the stream. But this book took me by complete surprise <laughs> for multiple reasons, okay? For multiple reasons. I had no idea how different... <laughs> How different the book would be from the show. I was I was like, what's happening? Who are these people? <laughs> For like I was so surprised because I just really was not prepared to be so in depth with everything that was going on. And I'm not gonna talk about all six chapters right at this moment right now, but <clears throat> once we got to the once I got to the sixth chapter, I was like what? <laughs> this is we're six chapters in already. <laughs> this is, I was so confused, but I think that they did a perfect job. Um, in the I, okay, okay, the book is amazing. This book is actually fantastic. The way that Robert Jordan explains certain scenarios is sometimes mad spicy, but also sometimes it's so captivating and, and it just kind of makes you hold on to every word that's, that's, you know, that you see, that you hear, that you partake in, you see everything that's going on instead of saying something like, Oh, he tripped over the branches. It's the branches are grabbing at Matt's feet. Why well, he tries to run or at Rand's feet as he tries to run? Like that is a beautiful way to go about saying something in a completely different way than I've heard before. Um, and stuff just the that's the first thing that stood out to me about each chapter that I that I was going through. It was like, oh my goodness, what is actually <laughs> what's actually happening? Uh, and then I did end up having to listen to the audiobook so I could finish it so we could do this today. And I mean, that definitely was a beautiful experience to hear Roseman Pike. Oh my goodness, to hear Roseman Pike, yo absolutely do a 
incredible job at every single voice embodying these characters to where the time to where she doesn't have to say who is speaking i know who's speaking because she has the affliction of that character she's becoming that character she's speaking through that character that in itself was an experience and then when i had when i was able to read uh, as well or read and listen or whatever the case may be through the time that I had it was a magical experience <laughs> yo I really wasn't pre- I, I just didn't know that that it was going to be this different and it was going to be so in depth with the things that were happening not just in depth but I was not prepared to be told a completely different story than the story that I have been told so far through the show all right uh The reason why this series is called From Watcher to Reader is because I didn't know anything about Wheel of Time at all uh, until Wheel of Time Season 2 trailer dropped ages ago, right? That's the first time I had ever heard about Wheel of Time. And then you guys, one of the best fan bases out there is the Wheel of Time fan base, uh, hands down. Uh, You guys kind of just came through and was like, you have no idea what you just got yourself into. And at the time, me and Battery was like, what the hell is happening? But fast forward 37 years later and we barely get season two and it's it's even better than season one. And I'm like, okay, now it's time. And, and now that we're reading the book and we're in the flow and we're getting to the nitty gritty of things, I am... I understand why so many people are like, I do not like the show. And I can understand that. And we're only six six chapters in. And I understand those arguments. I really do. I, there's so much more weight to the story in the book. And whoa. It's like I just was not, I really wasn't prepared to, to part. I just wasn't prepared to be. I guess warped into this, just into this new world type of vibe. Uh, And every, every bit of it was truly fantastic. I don't want to, I don't want to sound like too much of a broken record because we are going to talk about it in, in order as we do. So let's talk about chapter one. We're going to get the book now off of here. Let's move that down there. Is there, I'd put anything else there. I wish I had a little. Like a little, a little bear or something to put right there. That'd be cool. I'm gonna get a panda, 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 panda. Okay, so when we get in chapter, when we start chapter one, okay, right off the bat, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. Um, Mari Sue, the 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 Mariest model around. Uh, she told me that I should go into this book with an with the same way I go into a lot of things, and that is with. Uh, high expectations and an open mind, right? And whoa, <laughs> whoa, and whoa. Was that, like, I didn't know how right she was to tell me to not try to judge the 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 show by the book or the book by the show. Because this book, <laughs> this book and this show, they are not the same thing, okay? They are not the same thing. And I, I'm going to be honest, I might have been one of those people that wouldn't have liked the show as much if I had read this book. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, just because even when reading it, I mean, um, uh, Roseman Pike is, you know, she's reading it or, you know, she's performing it to be completely honest. And Remy is in here with me, uh, and she's listening and I'm like, I'm like, babe, this is completely different from anything that I know from the show. And she's like, what are you serious? And I'm like, yes, like super serious. This is completely different. I, the, we're six chapters in and not one thing <laughs> like, like there's there's maybe two things from the show that actually occur in the first six chapters of this book that is in the first episode of <laughs> of you know that but i can actually understand it a lot because while i know since i know what's going to happen next these first six chapters did feel like it took a a long time to get through it i don't think it did but it just felt like and again, I'm going to, I'm going to, cause I'm not comparing the, I'm going to say how I felt, but I ought, I can, I'm, I'm the type of person that is able to put my feelings aside and then still be able to enjoy something, no matter about the feelings that I have for it. Uh, if you know how I feel about Thor, love and thunder, you know that there are parts that I enjoy and there's parts that I don't, but we don't speak of, uh, you know, we don't speak of that movie here. Uh, the movie that shall not be named is how it would be, uh, 
you know, spoken of from henceforth. Um, but just, I mean, there's okay. Overview. I this I I feel like the book made me made me think that the kids were younger than the show made them, and I, that might be just a a personal feat, right? But reading the book did not feel like the characters were the right age in the show for this because I, and since I know this is came first, this doesn't misconstrue how I see the show. No, no, no. I mean, the show doesn't see misconstrue. How I see the book, the book really misconstrues how I see the show because I'm about source material. That, that is just how it is. I'm about source material. So going through this, these first six chapters, I was like, okay, when we get to the point that the show is at, that's when I will be able to actually make a sound decision, I guess you can say, of how I feel about where we are. You know what I mean? Like, until the book catches up to what the first episode entails, that's going to be the time where I really can make uh, a, a, f a more thorough decision, I guess you can say. But it just there were some things that just threw me off. A little bit and I was like hmm interesting so why did we do this and why did we do that so uh like I said okay now that I am done kind of ranting about it because I just had to kind of get all that out so I could thoroughly go through this but now that I have got the rant uh, aside I loved the earlier first the Ravens are awesome I loved all of that getting to see Egwene you guys let me know that that was added later on and was not there at first we love the prologue uh the map is beautiful chapter one is insane because um, because of a lot of reasons, I was not prepared for the, um, they're not called the fades, right? They're called, uh, something different. And for some reason it's slipping my, it's slipping my mind what they're called. Why is my brain the, are they the fade? The, the Madral? I don't know. I have no idea. My brain is my brain just took a, a a complete just down on me uh when I tried to think about that. But I loved the fact that the oh my god, what are they called? I have to figure out their names cuz I I'm not going to be able to talk about them properly if I don't know what their names are. I don't want to just keep are, are they the fade? They're the Madral, right? They're the the help me out please chat. Somebody say so, please help me. Um The sight are they the called the sightless? Are they all the same thing? Are the fade and the eyeless are that is that all the same thing? And the madral is that all the same thing? Same thing? Okay, all right. So the fade, I, I'm I'm just gonna call them the fade. I'm gonna call them the fade for right now. So the fade, the fades, awesome, right? I, I I'm pretty sure that's what that was. At least that was the fade that we see get introduced. And the way that it's introduced is such a magnificent way. It, it made me, it just made a, it, it gave it a different, I don't know, man. it just gave it a completely different feel, a, a completely different understanding, calling them the dark writers, you know, those in black, like all of these different explanations for what they are was just awesome. Let me see. Let me find the part. Uh, uh, oh, not, uh, not more than 20 spans back down the road, a cloaked figure on horseback followed them horse and rider alike, black, dull, and ungleaming. The rider's cloak covered him to his boot tops. The cow tugged well towards, c tugged well forward, so no part of him showed. Vaguely, Rand thought there was something odd about the horseman. Like, just the way that it's all put forth, it just built such an amazing uh, scene for me. And how, I'm trying to find the part where it specifically talks about it, the cloak. Oh, no. He could see only the vaguest outlines of a face, but he had the feeling he was looking right into the writer's eyes. <laughs> and he could not look away. 
queasiness settled his stomach. There was only shadow to see in the hood, but he felt hatred as sharply as if he could see a snarling face. Hatred for everything that lived. Hatred for him most of all. For him above all things. <laughs> Come on, son. Are we? <laughs> Yo. Okay, at this moment, I'm already, I'm already full blown, ready for whatever is gonna come next. Even though I know what these things are and I know what they look like, it's still bit, it's still built a crazy suspense for me. And that's something that I think is amazing for me to know what's gonna happen next, and me still to be filled with suspense and to be trying to figure out what's gonna happen. Is this moment gonna happen now? Is it gonna happen now? Like you know, like that's kind of <laughs> yeah. That this builds so much to the rest of the story that comes later, and I love that. <clears throat> like, oh, and then, oh no, is this not the moment where it talks about? Oh, no, this isn't the moment when it talks about the writer. I don't know where it, where the moment's at. but And then he's like, yo, the, the cloaked man. Like, I love that. I love that. And then later on, what do they say? You know what? If it was just one of you, then that would have been one thing. But it's all four of you. Like, yeah, give, give me that. Um, And then we get to come into town. And as we come into town, we are figuring out all of these things that are going around there's obviously some event happening everyone is obviously getting together i i just really loved the way that they were able to build out the world so much more and and really let us know hey these are the things that are going on and when they talk about oh every woman is always trying to get uh rand's dad uh what is his name tam thom Ta tam is his name tam am i am i am i butchering that Yeah, Tam, right? Uh, they're, everyone's trying to hook Tam up with someone, and he's like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm good." The boy needs a wa the boy needs a mother. Like, I love, I just love that. I love that. I love how important that the women are in the community, and they're like, "Hey, this is like," they're like, "Nah, this is y'all ain't about to just do that." And then all the men are like, "Yo, they all up in our business, but we can't be in their business." I loved all those little subtle aspects to show how truly important the um the factions i guess you could say in this small town really are and then i always forget that everyone kind of knows about what happened happened uh you know about the split or at least they know some type of version of it The fact we even get to understand the high the hierarchy. That's what I was that's the word I was looking for. We we are introduced to the hierarchy of this place very quickly. And it's very easy to understand and to follow. You know, it's all there. We don't need to to figure out too much to to kind of get on board with what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all there. It's all there. Every single part of it is there. How they keep talking about the gleaming. And then the fact that they just kind of, the way that Moiraine and Lan are introduced in such a subtle way. It was just so fun for me to kind of get through that, that first. So that's chapter one. So that, it was just so fun for me to get through chapter one. Uh, and, and sorry, and uh, get to the end of it and be like, Hey, this is, this is amazing. This is beautiful. This is something that I am so excited to get into the rest of this story with. <laughs> so how do you guys feel about chapter one at chat? Straight, I'm not English. <laughs> I know you're not English. I was just, I was just. <laughs> 
Uh, so excited to get into it. You probably got the rhythm of RJ's writing now. Lots of lots of calm, cool world building. Then all of a sudden, explosive action. Yes, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, this is my own question to you guys, chat. Let me get a one in the chat if you like uh writing in this type of way to where it's very calm cool and then a lot of action or do you like it the reverse way where it's very explosive action first and then the calm cool world building so let me get a one in the chat if you like it rj style to where it's calm cool and then explosive and then let's get a two in the chat if you like when it's explosive and then calm cool. So one in the chat for calm cool, then explosive. Two in the chat for explosive, then calm cool. Let me know how you guys prefer to consume your books uh, or what type of books you like to consume. If that's what I meant to say. Excuse me. Lots of description of clothes and curtains and then bam, shadow spun. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, this whole experience is going to be different. It is completely different, Mari Sue. I so was not, I, I promise you, I was not prepared for how different this experience has been. And I don't think I'm going to be prepared for how different it will continue to be as we continue down this journey. Oh my gosh. Uh, hell yeah, Roseman Pike ate that and left no crumbs. That is all facts. That is all facts. She ate that up to the part, to the point of like, She's doing every voice, and it's believable. That's what I love. No offense to the lovely Roseman Pike, but the Kramer reading audio books are even better. What? Are they really? I'm going to have to check them out for real. For real. I'm going to have to check them out. I'm definitely going to have to check those out. It's awesome that we have two great audiobooks to choose from. That's that is actually insane. I'm I'm going Roseman Pike first and then I'm going uh you know, I'm going the other one second. And okay, I'm I'll wait until we get to that part to talk about it. I'm going to try to go in order. I'm going to try to go in order. I don't know how to do this book club thing yet. This is all new to me. Um I don't know how book club is usually done. The way I usually do things is I'm trying I try to, you know, give all my thoughts, theories and opinion, all my thoughts first and then just kind of go crazy with it. But I think I wanted this to be a little more concise. I guess you can say so like going like chapter by chapter literally and kind of talking about the things that I liked and the things that I, I I not the things that I didn't like per se, but the things that I liked, you know what I mean, and just kind of, you know, just going through it. And I guess yeah, the things I didn't like as well. Uh, the show was really limited by the amount of episodes and I keep that, you know, I keep that in mind. Of course, the show is adapting the whole series, the series as a whole. That is something that I do think is to, that should be taken into account is that they are thinking of things that come on later on down the line that they're not going to be able to do the same way. So they have to kind of introduce it now. And that is a really good idea of doing that. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Brandon Sanderson's class that he did at BYU, but he, he mentions that he started writing his own screenplay because of whatever. And then he talks about a part in the book where something happens and then he takes all these different moments and put it into one moment and they and then makes it work like that. And I think that's kind of what is happening here as well is they're taking that role of, OK, we know that these seven actions actually are going to get us to where we need to get to in season three but in season one we have to get to here so let's take those seven actions and put two of those actions right here right now so then in season two we can put three more of those actions and then we can finish it off once we get to season three and and, and that'll be its own thing so when, you know what i mean and so on and so forth i think that's a really dope thing that they're doing uh the show would have needed three times the episodes to do the actual book i that is fair as well especially if we six chapters in and we haven't even got to the gritty well we just got to the gritty i should say we're barely at the gritty so so i guess i didn't even think about that we're at the gritty part now but it's still happening completely different if i'm not mistaken uh the show does some things better than the books and the books do, do some things better than the show okay okay i dig that 
uh, they are younger in the books. Is this true? Before I start going on a tangent, I want to make sure that this is a that this is a fact because I want to know about all. I, I got a lot more things to say about it then. Um, I thought the Dusty Wheel was still going to be. Oh, okay, okay, we're talking. Okay, okay. Uh, they are actually younger in the books. They are twenty in the show and eighteen, nineteen in the books. Egwene is sixteen. The boys are all 20 in the book, but the show aged up Egwene to match them for obvious reasons, I guess, you know, because we can't have, we can't have all, we can't have, yeah, come on, yeah, that's, in, that, yeah, yeah, we're not going to talk about that, it was another time. Uh, they are actually young, uh, no, no, we talked about that. So, since they are actually younger in the books, or, or since, yeah, or whatever, it just, it, I guess that puts even more... That gives even more context to how the actual uh, town or village is ran. Because it shows, even as these, like, they're, they're young men, but it definitely seems like they're being treated as boys. You know what I mean? So, in this society, it's super different. And then you turn around and you look at the women of the society, and it's almost like they become of age immediately. If, do you know what I'm saying? It's an obvious, it's an obvious difference. Am I? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The first season does all 14 books, but framed through book one, you cannot compare them like that. The show really is a different tune, turning of the wheel. Ooh, okay, Alan, I like that. You'll get the pin comment of the day because I really like that. That's that's nice. I like that a lot. Are they called the sightless? It's something like that. I don't know what it is, but. We're just going to go fades. Same thing. Regardless, they're fades. Fades are the easiest name. Okay. There are a lot of names for them. Fades, Eyeless, Half Men, Midral. <laughs> okay. I, I like that because, I mean, it's like different regions have different names for different things. I love that. That's freaking awesome. Uh, by the way, so mad they admitted Empty Road from the show. They did the scene, but no fade. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, I wonder why we did. they didn't introduce the fade at that moment. They probably didn't want to do it the same way, you know? It can change by region, kind of like Soda Pop and Coke, all being the same name in different parts of the U.S. Oh, that's a good freaking, oh, I like that example. As a Southern gal, it's Coke. I don't care if it's Dr. Pepper, it's Coke. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. It ain't got no name. It's all Coke. I, I, I got you, I got you. I hate the badger scene. The badger scene, the badger scene, the badger scene, the badger scene, the badger scene. The badger scene. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. My brain's not playing the scene in my brain. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. I learned the Coke thing from visiting my fam down south. This is why Tam lives way the fuck out of town. Yeah, my boy was not happening. Um, as a country boy, I am so glad they left that out of the show. Yeah. A lady, a lady. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you guys like it. You guys like it the regular. You guys like the calm and then the build up. I need the build up to make the climax more emotional. Hey, that is, I, I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I understand completely. That makes a lot of sense. I love RJ's style, but you got to know what you're doing. RJ was a real Vietnam vet, so his action came from a real place. Mm, here's the best way to know the ages of the characters. Oh, 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 it's a two-parter. It's a two-parter. Here's the best way to know the age of the characters. The Aeol War ends in 978 NE. The Winter Night Attack is 998 NE. Rand was born at the end of the Aeol War, and Perrin and Matt are born around the same time, so they're 20. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. That, make, that actually makes a lot of sense. And Rand and... 
and Rand and Egwene aren't doing the hanky panky in the books yet either. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know how long it goes, but they definitely are talking about it. Like, oh yeah, take him on as a wife. Take her on as a wife or as a you know what I mean? It's definitely being spoken of. Different factions and nations have different names. Egwene's younger brother Egwene's younger in the book. The boys are just less mature, more sheltered in some ways. Yes, exactly. I think that's a good way to put it, right? That's kind of like what I was... That's a way better way of saying it than what I was trying to say earlier. Uh, they are definitely less mature and more sheltered than, they, you know, like Egwene is and, and even, you know, Nynaeve. I just really like that. And even giving us that beginning part really hammers it in as well that like hey there are there's a hierarchy in this thing baby and it's a lot of stuff going on with it the badger scene is where matt invited ran to let a badger out on the green badgers are dangerous as hell it basically makes max a squish what <laughs> badgers are dangerous as hell I did not know that. Are badgers really that dangerous, yo? Yo, that's crazy. That's actually insane. I'm not going to lie. Uh, they had to make Egwene the same age as the boys to make her a potential dragon. I'm, I'm not. I'm Okay, I got you. But I'm pretty sure the Aeo War ends at the end. Or 978NE, whereas Winter Night is at the beginning, so they're most likely 19. Mm -hmm. I won't die on a hill over their ages, but I could have sworn I nailed this down. <laughs> Badgers are super dangerous. <laughs> I had no idea. I really had no idea. Not Remy coming out of nowhere to talk about badgers. <laughs> That's hilarious. Badgers are one of the most dangerous animals. No cap. What? Are you serious? I never knew. I'm, I'm like kind of. What? 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 <laughs> little badgers? Are, are, are badgers little? Or am, I making a, or am I making them a different animal in my brain? Have I made up an animal? That's not a badger. Maybe I'm thinking like a, of like a ferret or a possum. Wolverine is in the badger family. So dangerous equals yes. Yo, I wonder if there's a the badger in Marvel. That would be dope. I don't think I... I wouldn't be the badger. But I think that would be a dope, a dope name though. The badger. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I'm on. That was wild. <laughs> uh, actually, I wonder what we might compute their ages to, given that Wheel of Time weeks are like ten days long. I like that. One of X 23s clones is Honey Badger, aka Scout. You're right, and I knew that. See, Mar see, I was over here. I knew that, man. I, I knew that, Marisu. You be on it. <laughs> uh. Alan said, Badgers are Black Air Force energy. <laughs> Not coming through with the Black Forces ready to make a change. That is hilarious. That's super funny. I'm not going to lie to you, yo. I really had no idea that Badgers were on straight demon time like that. For <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so chapter one was was really nice. I liked it. It was a good start to everything that was going on. Uh, let's get in to chapter two. Chapter two, strangers. So I uh I love how this really builds on the relationship between Matt and Rand way more than 
Uh, I thought they were like I knew they had a good relationship, but they're like brothers, like they're bros. You know what I mean? They're bros. They're getting into all the mischief together, uh, and I love the the relationship between them as being bros. Um, Matt was wilding as always, but I really liked that too. It, it, it just made it, it just made it really made it dope. And it's kind of hilarious to know that Matt is a grown ass little man and doing all of these things. That's actually really funny. <laughs> um, but even, you know, the little things that are going on, I just, I just love it. They're sneaking away from trying to do their chores. They're sneaking away from not helping because Matt's not trying to do it. And then Rand is like, nah, bro, we got to do it. You know, we got to help my pops out. I like that. I like that. Um, and then the subtle hint of, wait, was his cloak black? And they're like, yo, what? You knew him too? Of course I could see his face. And his cloak is green. Oh, oh no, that's the wrong one. That was Ewan. That was Ewan. I thought that was the other one. But yeah, I loved that. I loved them talking about it and even just figuring it out. Um, all of that was really, really, really awesome. The way they're subtly talking about it throughout the entire you know, the, the entire first six chapters are like, man, what, what was going on there? And then how they just slowly start to mention uh, more, more rain and, and land that is oh, fantastic. I love the way it's like, yo, <laughs> and it was really funny to hear. For me, it was really funny for me to hear Moiraine kind of explain herself, basically. You know, that I don't know why, but it was just kind of, it was just kind of one of those meta moments in my brain. And it was like, I, I like it though. I like it. I like when, when, uh, okay, now I can talk about this part. Oh no, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So I can't talk about it yet, but I just like the way that she's reading how, like the character that she's playing that just, <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, Oh, and then right here, I loved this part. The way they talk, the way that, the way that this small, this paragraph right here gives you so much context to Mo to Moiraine, to Nynaeve, to how everyone sees Nynaeve, and and also the bet what the best part to me is it lets you know how important the wisdom is, and that the being of wisdom is not something to take lightly or take, you know you know, take for granted when you know that Nynaeve, Nynaeve is a, uh, is, is, is a wisdom. She asked for, she asked the wisdom for directions this morning. Uh, Ellen said, and called her child. Rand and Matt both whistled softly through their teeth and L and Ewan, 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 uh, tripped over his tongue in his haste to explain. The lady, the lady Moiraine didn't know she was the wisdom. She apologized when she found out she did and asked some questions about herbs and about who was around Edmund's field just as respectfully as any woman in the village, more than so, more so than some. She's always asking questions about how old people are and how long they've lived where they live and, oh, I don't know what at all. Anyway, Nynaeve answered like she'd bitten a green sweet berry then when lady moiraine walked away nynaeve stared after her like like well it wasn't friendly i can tell you that i love that entire paragraph because they're like yo <laughs> they're like oh snap no she didn't she must not know who nynaeve is all of it. And then as soon as Moiraine found out she was a wisdom, though, she apologizes for disrespecting her because she knows that that's actually something crazy. And that's something that happens in the show as well. But I just like the way that we didn't get to see the moment here. We saw the moment in the show, but in the book, they kept that moment to themselves. And it's like, that's such an interesting choice. You know what I mean? Like, they like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just really, really had a good time uh, going into that part as well. So 
uh, the the mention of the Gleeman, all these things that they talk about, it's just really dope that they get to give you this build up, this get ready for it, where it, like get ready to rumble. I love that entire aspect. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I really love it. We're gonna talk more. We're gonna talk more. We're gonna talk more. But before we talk more about chapter two. I just want to let y'all know that if you haven't already, you need to go and check out some of Dom's Bomb Gourmet Popcorn immediately to go get you some of that Bomb Gourmet Dom Popcorn. That's Bomb Gourmet. And of course, it's made by Dom. Hi, my name is Dominique Pruitt, and I started Don's Bomb Gourmet Popcorn LLC in the summer of 2021 to introduce delicious and unique flavored popcorn not found anywhere else in the world. Why you ask? Because I make it in my home with love, just for you. We offer over 10 flavors and are continuously creating new flavors that can be customized to any color or taste for your next event, party, or fundraiser. So go find yourself to our website and find a bombastic flavor of popcorn at DonsBombGourmetPopcorn.com or you can also follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Don's Bomb Gourmet Popcorn. That is right. Go and get you some of that. Dom's Bomb Gourmet Popcorn is delicious, it's lovely, it's sweet, and it's a nice little treat that you might want to eat. You heard me? <clears throat> but yeah, yo, I really, really enjoyed, uh, <clears throat> I really, really enjoyed it. Excuse me. <coughs> Good Lord. <coughs> Okay. Okay. And then I loved how we don't actually get to hear the meeting that the council has. We just get to see that they're obviously meeting about something. They're obviously getting together. They're obviously doing something that we don't know about. And while they're doing that, the boys are trying to find a way to explain to them what's going on. But they are discussing that very thing the entire time. So every I just love the way that those bridges cross over, like those paths cross over the same bridge. That's really what I want to say. I love the way that the paths end up crossing over the same bridge and you don't know it. You wa you're watching these two characters go down their own path. And in the distance, they see some other characters doing their own thing. And then somehow they end up meeting at the in the middle anyway and that was just mm, I love that and even the little things like they're like the the level of the level of descriptiveness that is gone to I really love it even though it's very slight at the same time Pulling his cloak together, Rand stepped forward to support Matt, but words died as the hair stirred on the back of his neck. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I love it. It's just, yeah, really, they did a really good job. Really good job. Rand's gaze fell to the woman who had spoken. She, too, had been watching the flight of the t of the raven, but now she turned back, and her eyes met his. He could only stare. This had to be the Lady Moiraine, and she was everything that Matt and Elwyn had said. Everything and more. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Yo, love it. Help me out. How do I say Ewen Ewan's name? What is the... I, I can't remember how it's said. Help me out, y'all. Because that's going to keep messing me up. But I just love the way that, you know, now we see, what, like, these same ravens that 
Nynaeve in the earlier has been looking at and been trying to figure out what's going on. And they were also looking at her. And now we know that they were also looking at Matt. And they were also looking at, and they were also looking at, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel like, I feel like getting introduced to the rest of the village was kind of a letdown. Ewan, thank you, thank you, Marisu, uh, was kind of a letdown to not get introduced to the rest of these people. And I really thought it was Ewan because I have a friend and his last name is Ewing, and it's and it's and it's and it's spelled just like that. So I should have knew that. I should have just went with my gut. Um, all together, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Good morning, Mistress uh, Lady Moiraine. Like. <laughs> Yo, and then I love this part. You know my name. I love it because she's watching him. And then it's like all this time I'm trying to figure out who you are. And boom. Mm, like, like what? And he's super just overly enthralled. It's just like, yo, Like, she smiled, and Rand found himself wondering if there was anything he might do for her, something that would give him an excuse to stay near her. Yo, like, come on, bro. She's instantly, I was like, wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. And what do I always tell y'all about Moiraine? You know I don't trust her. You know I don't trust Moiraine, yo. Like, I do trust her, but... I, you know, no, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't trust her, but I trust her. So I'm like, oh, you already playing your games, Moiraine. I trust Moiraine, but you just got to watch her. She's sneaky as hell. She, she, the word Smith is just too much. It's just too much. Uh, let's see. And then you and. You know, Ewan pulling up, and he's like, oh, uh, lady boy brain. Like, I... <laughs> oh, man. And then I love the way that they talk about land. I freaking love the way that they talk about land. They speak about land in this way to where it's like, you don't know he's there. <laughs> like, land just be like, Hello. Like, oh, bro. Like, I love that. I love that. You know, we were introduced to him and he doesn't even say anything yet. He hasn't said a word to us. We, he just keeps popping up out of nowhere. If you weren't looking at him, you wouldn't notice him. Like, if you weren't actually looking for someone, you would not notice that he's there. I love it. Mm. <laughs> as the wheel turns and they they know about warders they know about all these things i just really like the way that we're introduced to the world in this way that's not overly sat it's like i mean it is a little overly saturated because there's a shit ton of things getting thrown at you but it's getting thrown at you in a way that the world it, it, it happens in this world. It's like, okay, wait, what is that? You want to know the answer to questions. It's giving you a, it's giving you a way to kind of, you know, get into all of those gritty, gritty, midi things. And I love it. 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 Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That was, that was land. That was my boy land. In passing the three youths, and passing the three youths, his gaze ran over them, eyes as cold as blue, as <laughs> eyes as cold and blue as a midwinter dawn. It was as if he were weighing them in his mind, and there was no sign on his face of what the scales told him. He quickened his pace until he caught up to Moiraine, then slowed to walk by her shoulder, bending to speak to her. Rand let out a breath. 
he had not realized he had been holding. <laughs> He's like, oh. I yo, I've done, I've I've let out a breath that I didn't know I was holding before. Have you ever been that shocked or in awe of something that you're like, <clears throat> oh, whoa, what the whoa, what would just happen? Like I forgot to breathe. You know what I mean? Uh. <sighs> Love it. Love it. Chapter two. Chapter two was cool. Was cool. It was it was definitely shorter. It it made its point. Chapter two introduces us to um Moiraine and Lan. And I love that about chapter two. And my thing too, right? Uh is that when you guys like some of you guys know that I'm uh, you know, writing my own book uh and stuff like that and in the process of doing that i promise you uh that this comes around to what i'm about to say um so i like let's see 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 oh i love that like when writing my book i was trying to figure out how long certain chapters should be and what should be inside of those chapters as well right so in these certain moments in these certain moments, like, I'm, like, reading the book, and I'm like, whoa, we just had one chapter, and the entire purpose of that chapter was to explain to us who these two characters are, like, yes, like, yes, I love that, like, I love that. <laughs> Like, yo, that's just so peak right there. Like, that is just so peak right there. Like, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yo, I love just being able to be introduced to these characters. And we're like, as soon as we come in with them, that we're seeing who they are. We're having these other characters explain what they think about them, what they know about not just them, but what they do and who they are in terms of their selves. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yes. I love that. Give me more of it. Like, give me more of things like that to where we're getting things explained to us and then we meet that and then da 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 You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that makes sense. All right, y'all. Let's talk about... Let's get into chapter two. Let's get into the chapter two. Let's get into the chapter two. Uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. I think Beltine is supposed to be in May. Like, it's supposed to be spring. But stuff isn't growing and Sin Blue is blaming Nynaeve. Yes, yes. Yes, Sharice, I love that. I actually love that. He's like, yeah, if you ask the wisdom, <laughs> if you ask the wisdom, she'll tell you nothing. She'll walk away from you. Why do you think that is? I love it. I love it. I love all of that. He's set tripping the entire time. <laughs> I love that he is tripping with Nynaeve uh, from the beginning. He's like, yo, I know she's a witch. Like, and she's not even a good witch. Like, that's basically his energy. She's a witch, and she's not even a good witch. What is she doing here? <laughs> why is the, why do we have a young wisdom? Why am I looking to, why am I listening to someone that's younger than me? Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. They could still be 19 at the start of the book. Oh, that's true. I'm glad we're spending so much time on Badgers. It will come back around. Ooh. Yo, the Badgers is crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I want to know everything about Badgers now. <laughs> Matt is doing too much. Matt's tripping. Matt is the worst character until book three. <laughs> Matt and Rand's bromance is chef's kiss. Matt and Rand's bromance in this book is chef's kiss. Oh, okay, okay. I am ready. Yeah, I, I like the. I like that. It's obvious that. Rand is the neutral for Matt's chaoticness, but I like that he can still be, uh, you know, tricked into do not tricked, but he can be convinced into doing things he knows shouldn't happen. And I love that because that's what that's what neutral is all about. Matt is okay until he's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely okay until he is no longer okay. Uh, I also love. Tam's development, which is non-existent in the show. 
Yes, I agree with what you're saying. My bad. I had to. I had to go back in my head and. Yes, this is so true. Um, Tam's. De- I didn't like Tam was a dope character, but the dopest thing about his character in the show was finding out, you know, that he saved little baby, little baby Rand, right? But in this, we're not even to that part yet, and I love it all. I love. T- I love Tam, and I love what he's doing, and I love how much he loves rand and how like he's such a farmer and and still you know there's something extra there and the wisdom that he brings when he talks and how much of that father figure that he brings to the area and to the realm and to the 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 village i mean that is one of the biggest reasons why all the women are trying to find him a wife is because he is such a father and uh you know like a like okay i'm not trying to get too like heavy into it but you know a, a, a heavy father always needs a mother like in a way you know what i'm saying like the father needs the mother the the balance it, it needs balance it needs to be a balance of some type of something the thing needs another thing in some way you know the energies need to be balanced and i like that they're kind of saying that within just the story of that if you see what i'm saying like you know what i'm saying like so many stories are being told at one time and i love it google says may 1st for real world bell time oh okay we're celebrating bell time bell bell time next year everybody get ready for it everybody be ready um i don't know what we're gonna do for bell bell i don't know what we're gonna do but we're gonna do something what we're gonna do for bell time let's talk about it um, my, my boyfriend is convinced that Matt Rand and Perrin are pillow friends. Nah, that's crazy. <laughs> Yo, uh, non-binary Matt is a lot of people's head cannon. I could see them being pillow friends, especially Rand and Matt. One thing I like about the show is giving scenes. With, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are wildin', yo. I thought y'all was going fire rounds right there. I was like, yo, y'all are wildin', <laughs> It was getting spicy. Um, I already know that that there got to be some fan fiction going on there, man. I already know there is, <laughs> and I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, one thing I like about the show is giving scenes we only heard about in the books. Yes, 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 yes. I think this is a really um amazing thing that the show. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think this is an amazing thing that the book is doing with us is like, at least for with me, right? Because you guys already know what's happening in the book. But for me, the book is like giving me these different things that I had no idea was happening. It's giving me so much more context to other stuff that's going on in the show already. And it's just making me love everything more, which I think is how everything should be. It shouldn't be like, oh, this is so much better than this. Now I hate that. It's like, man, this is so much better than this. But I still like this because it's part of this. That's that's how it is for me. So uh, this is awesome. <laughs> This is awesome so far. Um, uh, absolutely. Uh, take note of the Luhans. Can't believe they were cut from the show. Yeah, that's pretty. A lot of stuff is cut from the show already that I could see in these just in just these first six chapters. Um, um, most people miss it, but Moiraine used compulsion on Ran when she met him. Yo, she. Yo, I. I, I, I know, like, that, that's what I was saying before. She's evil. What? I never thought of that. Absolutely not. Mario Sue's not having it. I don't recall Moiraine knowing how to do that. Mm. Compulsion is evil and expressively forbidden under tower law. Well, there it is. She's still, hey, she's still evil. I, I care. I care not what you say. I do she sent, I'm not going to talk about the show too much, but she sent that woman to her death. She knew what was going to happen. She could not, that is not okay. Okay. The means of the many do not weigh the means of the few or whatever that's called. Um, I mean, it does, but I mean, does it? I mean, it does. One, if it does, two, if it doesn't. No, I'm just playing. Am I? Um, I always wondered how compulsion might have been used in the AOL. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, like you could use it to help someone battle addiction or something. Oh, Age of Legends. I got it. Hey, I got it. I think I did good. I think I did good just now. Uh, like you could use it 
to help someone battle addiction or something, couldn't you? Uh, for for compulsion? Oh, you will not do meth anymore. Yo, that's that's actually pretty. That's pretty heat. My rain uses feminine charm and charms on a young boy. I understand if that amounts to compulsion, not <laughs> Marisu. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is, but there was definitely something going on there. Cause when I was, I was like, oh, he would do anything for her, but why? If you look at the description of compulsion, what happens with Rand is described to a T, especially when you consider the way Moiraine and Rand's relationship deteriorates over time. Ooh. Marisu was coming through deleting shit. Okay. Uh, not in the magical sense anyway. Ayo. Hey, By the way, this is a non-spoiler chat. Please respect that at all times. A hey, facts. Marisu will come through with the banana. -ma. With the banana. -ma. I just be like, hey. Marisu is the TVA up in this G-thing. Uh, compulsion has been brought up in the show, but I don't want to push it too far because it hasn't been explored too much. I just wanted to point out to pay attention when it does come up. Yeah, compulsion has definitely been introduced in the show, and I definitely felt compulsed by what Moiraine did. And it may just be, you know, a little, a little, you know, like a little, you know, going on there. But I, I don't know. Basically, Lan is judgmental. Lan was tripping. Lan was like, you really think one of these peasants is the dragon reborn? <laughs> like, yo. <laughs> uh, until since they says, uh, otherwise, please confine chat to current uh, place in the books. Facts, 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 facts. Sorry for coming off harsh. Yeah, don't, it, yeah it's all good. Marisu, you nice. Marisu's nice, y'all. Don't take offense to what Marisu say is. She's, she's nice. She's just be. You know, she, she do be tripping sometimes, but it's warranted. I warrant tripping in doses. Uh, the coin thing she did. Wait, wait, wait. The coin thing she did had a compulsion component, but that part didn't work on Ram. Probably doesn't work on people who channel unlike proper compulsion, but the air tag part still worked. I, I, I see. That actually makes a lot of sense to me because, but, but at the same time, Okay, I don't want to talk about the show too much just again, but OG lady, old lady, definitely got compulsed into writing that letter and doesn't remember. So, But but y'all already told me that it's different. Like, the magic, the way that the magic system works in the show is not the same the way that the magic system works in the book. I know that. So, I'll just, I'll, I won't, I'll stop, I'll stop comparing. I'm sorry. Uh, I just need to put a pin in it now because it gets confirmed later in the books. But if you don't know how to look for it, uh, now you miss it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, well, I'm, I'm always, I am always weary of homegirl. I always imagine Tam as Keanu Reeves, so dangerous, yet since, yet serene somehow is, that's just crazy. That's crazy. I forgot to like till now. Yo, if y'all, if the rest of y'all forgot to like, make sure you drop a like because it's all love around here and I definitely appreciate it. And if you don't know, it helps a lot around here with the YouTube algorithm guides. You know, they be set tripping on us out here in these streets. But, and, and you know, I, you know, they be set tripping on me because it'd be like, bro, you try to have a life outside of YouTube. <laughs> you try to be a father and a husband. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> we ain't putting you on no pages. I appreciate the like, uh, wonder, wander lost. Yep. Wander lost. You heard me. Not all wander, not all who wander are lost. Whoa. That's actually beautiful. Is that from something or or can I steal that? All right, let's get into the chapter three, baby. Let's get into chapter three, yo. Where is it? Chapter three? Chapter three. All right, I'm ready to talk about chapter three. Are you ready? 
said, talk about it with me. I need a, I need a, oh, bam. I needed a bookmark, I'm sorry. The book keep closing and I keep having to find my spot and I'm tired of that. I'm tired of it, man. I'm tired of it. So let's, let's get it. Book line, show line. <laughs> IDK because Daniel Henney. Nah, it's crazy. The magic system in book one and two is different than the rest of the series. I think I heard someone say something about this in the show. I think, I think, in I mean, in the watch party, I'm pretty sure someone said that the magic system and the books just get way better once you get past the second one because of things like the magic system not being all the way figured out and ironed out or or uh or yeah just not all the way ironed out you know what i mean like it's not all the way ironed out it's not all the way fleshed out flu uh or just yet or whatever the case may be and you know that obviously comes with time of getting more on point with it At least one part of the compulsion part didn't totally work, uh, or he wouldn't have told Tam he was leaving. Oh, that's true, because he definitely was like, yo, I'm out. I'm out this G thing. And that was definitely, I, I loved everything that kind of was going on, you know? I Okay, uh, chapter, yeah, because, okay, back to chapter two real quick. I really appreciate the overall discussion that was had between Rand and Moiraine because it was just like watch it was kind of watching them interact it did feel magical in its own way it there it, it kind of felt I mean I don't it didn't feel I didn't get this feeling from the show but in the book I get this kind of like Luke Obi-Wan vibe from it and I didn't get that from the show you know I didn't get a master meeting and apprentice vibe uh, in the show till later on. But this immediately is giving me like a. Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you. Are you touched by the light? You know what I mean? Like I love that aspect. It does. It does go a, a long way for me. And even with Rand being centered in this story. Oh my gosh. I just realized that. I just realized that the earlier in the show. I mean, I just realized that the earlier in the book is Nynaeve's, Egwene's beginning in the show. I just realized that. Like, the bucket of water thing is Egwene going through the water thing at the same... Like, you know what I mean? Because they started from a different time. I like that. That's cool. But it's like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. I just like that. I like that. I'm... Mm. I love it. I love it. Just the the entire vibe between Moiraine and Rand. It's just so, there's a connection immediately of some kind. And that, it does, it feels magical, but it also feels, you know, it felt a little sinister to me at the same time. Just the terminology that was chose for the meeting or when Rand is like, he found, a, he wanted to do anything for her. Like, he's compulsed, he's moved, he's... He's rah, like, I don't know what else to call it, but yes. I wouldn't say the magic system. It's just vague until main characters start learning it. I, yes, yes. And I loved that. I love that too. I love that. And and that is a, that's something that I that we talked about even in season two is that it felt like we have a completely different magic system, which we do. I mean, in season one from season two is a completely different magic system because the magic starts to take uh, color to what's going on and all this other stuff. Like, they did it. Uh, they did a really good job with that. But at the same time, it's giving it to us as the viewer like we're experiencing a new level of the magic system now. So we now understand a different level of the magic system. And I'm like... <laughs> Like, that is beautiful. It's not just ironed out. The magic fundally, fundamentally works differently in the first two books. It's a soft magic in the first two books. Then, starting in book three, it's hard. Ooh. OMG, what a great description of that meeting. Not all 
Oh, it's a quote from Lord of the Rings, though. Technically, the real quote is not all those who wander are lost, but it's already too long of a username without the those. <laughs> not all those who wander are lost. Is that a very important part? Is the those really important? Not all who wonder are lost. Mm. That's a hard debate to have until we get to book three. Put a pin in it. My boy Alan is all over it, baby. Uh, yeah, change the change in the magic in the show is just due to budget. I know, Sharice. I know. Man, I know that. But you know, we we stay in universe for stuff. <laughs> we stay in universe, Sharice. Hey, I'm Sensei Fido, <laughs> aka Vane Sensei, and I'm here with my bro. Yo, you already know it's Vane DeVito, bro. We up in here, man. Today we came with a little surprise for y'all, which was a little surprise for us as well. Facts. And we've been waiting on this surprise. So you y'all see it. Y'all see it. You feel the me? Little delivery box. We right got the there. little box you know I mean? from none other than Glitch Energy, yo. Yo, big glitch <laughs> out here. You know what I'm saying? Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it like a sauce, shake it, shake it like a shake it, shake it, shake it like a shake it, shake it, shake it like a shake it, shake it. We in there. Ooh, it smelled dumbass good. Fire. Ooh. This is the starter kit. I believe it starts at fifteen dollars. We got the shaker, five flavors. I'm not sure if it, if that's how it comes. That's what they sent to us. So we we definitely appreciate that. But y'all definitely check it out. Tell us what your favorite flavor is if you've already tried it. Chapter three, the peddler. I was again, mind blown that we were in chapter three and the story was so different from what I was prepared for. Uh, <laughs> Once the peddler, you know, comes into play, I really like it. Oh, and this is where we're introduced to Perrin now. I am... I... <laughs> Perrin is so different from the show. <laughs> he's so... uh, He's so... I don't even know what the word is. He's very Eeyore-ish, for lack of better words, you know? He's just so different. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. This is where we're introduced to the to the man, Padden Fane. <laughs> the man on the wagon was Padden Fane, a pale, skinny fellow with gangly arms and a massive beak of a nose. Fane, always smiling and laughing as if he knew a joke that no one else knew, had driven his wagon and team into Edmonds into Edmonds Field uh, every spring. For as long as Rand could remember. <laughs> I love it. That's beautiful. I just I, I don't I don't know, man. I might just be I, I might just be a I might just be a sucker for it, but I love it. That's just so what a way to introduce somebody. He's always laughing like he knows a joke that nobody else knows. That is crazy. The door flew open. I love it when doors fly open.
Let's see. Okay, we're going to read a little bit right here because I really like this entire part. The peddler gave the council and villagers alike exactly the same attention as he fussed with trying with tying his reins off just so, which was to say hardly any attention at all, which was to say hardly just so, whatever. Uh, he nodded casually at no one in particular. He smiled without speaking and waved absently to people with whom he was particularly friendly. Though his friendliness had always been of a peculiarly distant kind, backslapping without ever getting close. The demands for him to speak grew louder, but Fane waited, fiddling with small tasks about the driver's seat. For the crowd, da 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 da, -da. Rand and Matt edged into the crowd. Crazy terminology, bro, decided to use. Uh, getting as close to the wagon as they could. Ran would have stopped halfway, but Matt wriggled through the press, pulling Rand behind him until they were right behind the council. Love the way that they let us know where they are. Love the way, you, you know what I mean? Like, like, I love the way that goes on. Um, like this is how they get to this place. We see them moving through the crowd. We, we follow them doing these different things. And it's just, just everything is gets, gets a, just a beautiful description of what's happening. Instead of saying they move through the crowd and da, 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 da. Yes. His terminology is wild by saying they edged to it, but still you kind of understand what he's implying with that wild terminology. Um, I had been thinking you were going to stay out of the farm, stay out on the farm through the whole festival. Par oh, wait, did I lose my spot? Oh, no, 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 I did lose. No, I just want to go farther in. Um, I love that. I, I just, I, I, I'm good with everything that was, goes on here, you know. Um, Luhan, of course. Uh, this is this is the again this is the wild ass terminology my guy this had me I was like what um half a head shorter than ran the curly haired blacksmith's apprentice was so stocky as to seem a man and a half wide with arm with arms and shoulders thick enough to rival those of master luhan himself I was like yo like I was like, but when I heard it, it sounded like it was, he's thick enough to rival the map. Those, I was like, yo, he's thick enough to do what? I got to rewind that because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Um, and that's what, because I was like, what did she say? What did, what did Moy Rain say just now? Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. And there's just some other terminology like that is just kind of wild in there. It's just kind of spread throughout there where you just mention stuff as thick or girthy. And it's like, Hey, yo, like, why are we saying these things? Like, why are we describing things in this way? <clears throat> um, at the moment, Pad and Fane stood up on the wagon seat and the crowds quieted in an instant. Rand's last words exploded into utter silence. Uh, the peddler with an arm raised dramatically in. Ray, wait. The peddler with an arm raised dramatically and his mouth open. Everybody turned to stare at Rand. The bony little man on the wagon prepared to have everyone hanging on the first words gave Rand a sharp searching look. <laughs> Yo, they did one of those cut moments where everything, <laughs> you know, everything goes off and then it's like, boom. What's happening here? Uh... You are thinking you have had troubles in the two rivers, are you? Well, all the world has troubles from the great blight south to the sea of storms, from the Arith Ocean to the west of the Aeol Waste in the, in the east. <clears throat> and even beyond, the winter was harsher than you've ever seen before, cold enough to gel your blood and crack your bones. Ah, winter was cold and harsh everywhere. In the borderlands, they'd be calling your winter spring. 
but spring does not come, you say. Wolves have killed your sheep. Perhaps wolves have attacked men. Is that the way of it? Well, now spring is late everywhere. There are wolves everywhere. Where all hungry for any flesh they can sink a tooth into, be it sheep or cow or man. But there are things worse than wolves or winter. There are those who would be glad to have only your little troubles. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes. What could be worse than wolves killing sheep and men? Men killing men. Why are we cooking like this? Why are we cooking like this? We're freaking cooking. Pat and Fane literally stands up there and causes a mass panic immediately. As soon as he gets on stage, he's causing a mass panic. Like, that is just insane. And 100% the plan. The standard of the dragon has been raised and men flock to oppose and to support. Yo. One long gasp left every throat together and ran shivered in spite of himself. Oh. Oh, excuse me, what happened? <laughs> Yo, we're cooking. The dragon, someone, the dragon, someone moaned. The dark one's loosed and gilded. Not the dark one. The dragon's not the dark one, and this is a false dragon anyway. I love the banter. I love everyone in the in the crowd talking. Like, I don't know if this stuff happens in books a lot, but it made me really happy that it did happen here. And even though we're not, I don't know if we're going to remember any of these characters' names later on, it just adds a lot more depth to who we're with, who we're talking to, and the fact that these people do have names, and the fact that they do exist, and that the fact that all of their lives do matter to somebody. I love those aspects. Um, uh, la, 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 la. He's just another false dragon. He must be. What difference does that make? You remember the last false dragon? He started a war too. Thousands died. Isn't that right, Fane? Like, thousands died when the last dragon was announced or, or came around? Like, this is serious. So it's like people don't really want to be in the situation that they in at all. So, like, if they wanted to, they would not get my... Well, no, because the, the one power corrupts of course so it's like once they start using the one power they get corrupted da, 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 da. that'd be crazy if that's a lie i'm not gonna lie that would be insane if that's not the truth if the truth is not the fact that the one power really makes people go crazy yo i would i will be baffled because homeboy was not crazy uh they they smited bro Like, you know, they smited, bro. Uh, it's, evil's it's evil times. No one claiming to be the dragon reborn for 20 years and now three in the last five years. Evil times. Look at the weather. Like, I, it, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, um, like the doomsday f vibe that immediately starts going on. Like, Come on, yo. Beautiful. I just love it. I love the way it's constructed. All of that is constructed just the way that I like, just the way that I need it to be. Again, Perrin is super doom and gloomy as well. And I guess he's not super doom and gloomy, but he's more of a realist. You know, he's really, he's more of like in this world of magic and things existing. He's still like, you think that shit is real? Are you serious? I <laughs> That's such a cool way to introduce stuff. The dragon going to save us sounds like Copland to me. <laughs> Yo. Dark. 
Dark Friends, Aes Sedai. Like, they just start dropping things back to back. And that is just really awesome. Yeah. A Gleeman! <laughs> and they were super juiced about the Gleeman. Is a Gleeman basically an entertainer? Or, or am I tripping? Because it's like a man that fills you with glee, right? Pause. Yeah, okay. I think that's all I want to... I think that's all I want to talk about for chapter three. I think that's it. I do believe that is all. Gotta get a, a a bookmark, yeah. My book is open and why? Uh, okay, so let's talk about chapter three. Can we get to the gleaming, please? <laughs> my shoe is my shoe is ready. It, we're getting there. We're getting there. No, it's not important at all. That's why I left it out. Just being pedantic. Hate to say something's a quote when it's not exact. Oh, I got you. I live for pedantry. OMG, yes, our medieval Mick Jagger. <laughs> Might be we got to talk about the peddlers first. <laughs> Spoilers, peddlers. Bad BT dubs. <laughs> Yo, yes, uh, Peddler is bad. And I was like, as soon as I read the Peddler, I was like, son of a bitch, it's bad and fade. I was like, Yo, he, he, he gets his own chapter. Like, see, this is the thing that I was talking about. Like, all of these little moments are getting their own chapters. And it's making me really just want to do those type of things in a way but i don't want to do that because i'm not that you know what i mean it's just giving me i'll say it's giving me insight on the things that i should introduce within a chapter possibly you know because it does make sense but at the same time it's like it's not my cup of tea to have everything super dragged out the way it is but i still like everything that's happening at the same time you know what i mean because everyone got their own taste and and i do like like i love the calm cool into the world build like into the explosiveness as well but but i guess every book is different you know because sometimes six chapters could be 30 years and sometimes six chapters could be seven days and si sometimes six chapters can be one day so i just i think that's really i really love that about the book as well but it's just something that again again i didn't realize how much i had to be disconnected from my show brain so that's what i'll say is it, getting into these first six chapters really helped me to be able to now disconnect from my show brain and not try to be like, oh, here's what's going to probably happen within the first chapter. Like, no, that's not it at all. Like, I can't think that way at all. And I didn't know that I couldn't think that way that much. Like, them, as much as I can't, I should say. <coughs> hey, your <clears throat> parent is so much less married than in the show. <laughs> Yo, he super is. I love when doors fly open, but honestly, same. No, for real, for real. Like, me and Remy have been re-watching uh, uh, Harry Potter because I have never watched all of Harry Potter, like, as an adult. I've never even seen the last couple of movies for Harry Potter, so we've kind of been going through and re-watching all of them, and I be rolling whenever they be busting through the doors, and they're, like, like when, when Dumbledore pulled up and he was like, Harry, Harry! Did you put your name in the comment of fire? Like, <laughs> bruh, hilarious. 
hilarious. That and I think of stuff like that whenever someone bursts through a door or whenever something says, "Oh, they burst through the door," or they, you know, the door flew open. That's what I think of. Is because you have to put a little force. You got to put some force behind the door to make it swing open. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not you don't just open a door and it just swings. Like no, you got to kind of, uh, you know what I mean? So just to, I just always see and no one ever caring what it hits. It's always just a boom, like bro. I don't know why that's hilarious to me, but I'd be rolling off of that. You know, anytime I see it, I just, I'm, yeah, that that's gonna have me rolling for show. Sure. Just why are you, why are you going through the door so aggressively? That's all I would have done. That's yeah. Uh, I love how a lot of the ways uh, RJ describes Pat and Fane could describe me and my neurodivergent self. <laughs> Yo, always smiling like. They know something that no one else is new. <laughs> Perrin is thick as fuck. Yeah, boy, he thick. What happened? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Y'all are wildin', yo. Yo, Sharice and Mary Sue be wildin' together. Um, Book Perrin is literally unfilmable. What's going on? <laughs> My literal worst nightmare coming up, talking in a crowd, and everyone goes silent. Yo, isn't that insane? Just, hey, what did they just look at you like, okay. Like, oh, my God. I didn't know. I didn't even know stuff like that happened. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, someone recommended Lesby Nerdy to you uh, before, but said most of her vids are spoilery. I remember that. True. Uh, but now she has a series out with her baby, baby sister, watching the show, then starting the books. Oh, that's super dope. Uh, that's awesome. I'm going to have to tap in. I'm going to have to tap in with that. OMG, yeah, Jenny is great, and her little sister is hilarious. I love Jenny Lesbian Nerdy. I wish more of her vids were non-spoiler, but we'll watch them all eventually. Facts. We will watch them all eventually, and I'm super excited to watch everything. Uh, Sensei, repeat after me. Anybody's name in the first book will be important later. Start learning names now. Anybody's name in the first books will be important later. Start learning names now. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll remember every person that we've been told their names uh, because there's been like 20 of them. <laughs> but I do remember everyone, but not everyone's name. I know who the people are. I see their faces in my head because I was walking through the town, of course. Um... But, uh, yo, shout out to, shout, shout out to Unraveling the Pattern, my boy Lauren over there, that actually was walking through the town. Like, shout out to him. Jealousy at an all-time high, but he definitely deserves it, and as do all the other YouTubers that went, um, for sure. One village worth of names down, 2,000 more names to go. Okay, so this is my next question, chat. How do you guys feel about being thrown a shit ton of names in a book at the beginning? Let's get a one in the chat if that's not your cup of tea. Let's get a two in the chat if it is your cup of tea. Or if it's just like, I'm not really tripping about it. Because, you know, I'm going to talk, you know, I'm... I'm starting to talk about my writing and stuff like that a little bit more here on, on the show. And to me, I want to introduce names because you got to know who said what, you know, you got to talk about people. There's going to always be a lot of stuff going on, but in the, like in wheel of time in the eye of the world, I should say, you know, in the start, we're just kind of introduced. Well, outside of the two prologues that we get, uh, we're introduced to just kind of Rand and his dad. And then we're slowly introduced to more and more people. Like, is that more of your cup of tea or is it more of a, okay, let me just get, you know, let me int get, in do you want to get introduced to different characters and different chapters? Like, what is your vibe when it comes to uh, the names in books and things along the lines of that? So one in the chat, if you, if you're okay with getting thrown a lot of names or two in the chat, if you don't want to get thrown a lot of names, one in the chat, if you want to get thrown some names Two in the chat, if you don't want no names thrown at you, let me know how you feel about that. When you are consuming your book content, baby, um, you can still enjoy the books without being any good at remembering names. I'm proof. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Because, I mean, in some some ways, uh, you know, 
you know, in, in some ways it, it goes a long way. And then you're able to connect to characters that you are just slowly introduced to. And, and, and then sometimes it's like, damn. <laughs> but I mean, I guess after, I guess it gives more weight to rereading things. Cause it's like, oh shit, the dude that pulled up in, in book three was the same dude that we met in book one. I didn't even realize that the first time I read it, you know, like, cause that stuff even happens to me. Like, it's like, oh, whoa, I didn't realize that we were introduced to this character so early on. <laughs> it's kind of, you know it kind of be insane my mom kept calling the gleeman the clown hey i'm not gonna lie i did the same thing in my head when they said gleeman and the first thing i thought of is is that a clown like is that supposed to be a clown <laughs> but now he just fills people with glee <laughs> uh a gleeman is a low budget bard in this world <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. The first thing I thought of was home homeboy that we meet later on in the show. That was at the pl at the shop, uh, at the bar where the lady was a dark friend, or a dark acquaintance. Excuse me. That's what I thought of immediately. I was like, "Yo, is this bro from later on?" <sighs> um. Bards are for big city lords. Gleeman go from village to village to village. Uh, toss the coin to your witcher, O Valley of Plenty. Yeah, that that boy was a Gleeman for sure. Uh, they're very excited about the Gleeman because their internet's been out for millennia. No. Here come the dad jokes. All right, first dad joke of the night. Where's where's the dad where's the dad joke taxes? Hold on. I, I need those. <laughs> I need the dad joke taxes. I've been waiting for them. No, no curses. Uh, technically correct. <laughs> oh snap, that's true. Uh, do we got an all girl chat? Yo, y'all was wildin'. Talk about parent being thick. Come on now. Talking about talking about book parent is unfilmable. What's happening? What's what are you? What is y'all on? I must be late where everybody at. <laughs> Y'all must all be in another time zone where it's like getting close to midnight. <laughs> it ain't close to midnight here. <laughs> uh, one, I love getting names. I'm doing well when I manage to remember my own name. <laughs> I honestly love learning names now. Reading these books made me a better student in high school. Damn, I wish I had them. Um, <laughs> there is actually a rule for how many characters you can introduce. You can introduce between five to seven characters in the first three chapters and two to three characters every two chapters after that. Damn. Well, I'm definitely not following that rule. Oh, well, I guess I am. Five to seven characters in the first three chapters. Damn, is that a is that is that a is that a real rule? Cause my boy, my boy did not follow that rule at all. <laughs> that did like yeah, man. Uh, RJ did not follow the rule. Uh, Any more, and people begin to get overwhelmed. That makes sense though. That's more of a uh, rule of thumb for TV shows, isn't it? That makes sense as well. Uh, I will not remember all the names, but that's what the glossary is for. Mm, a glossary. I need to make my glossary as well. LBF, my boy. What's up with it, LBF? You just pulling up, answering questions. How you doing? LBF in the chat. Hello there. Yo, the rule for shows is slightly different. It comes down to how many people your average person can keep track of. You can pair them up and it expands how many characters you can have. 
I kind of want to do that for the shoe. Link and zoo. I hope everyone's. I hope you're doing good. LBF. <laughs> Reminder not to read glossary till you finish the book. I know. <laughs> I got it. I know. No matter how bad I want to read it, don't. No matter how bad I want to go back to the. I might just go back to the glossary so I can kind of get a understanding of what it may look like so I could do my own, but I won't actively read it. Is that is that if that's if that's something that's actually even possible? Possible. Uh. All right. So let's get into chapter three. Sensei Fido, aka Vane Sensei, and I'm here with my bro. Yo, y'all already know it's Vane DeVito, bro. We up in here, man. Today, we came with a little surprise for y'all, which was a little surprise for us as well. Thanks. And we've been waiting on this surprise. So, you, y'all see it? Y'all see it? You feel the me? Little delivery box. We right got there. the little box you know I mean? from none other than Glitch Energy, yo. Yo, big glitch <laughs> out here. You know what I'm saying? Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it like a sauce, shake it, shake it like a shake it, 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 shake I'm on go, 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 but I'm on go. Chapter three. Chapter three. The Gleeman. I am really, 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 really cool with the Gleeman. Uh, the Gleeman and the Peddler. I think those were both. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, this is chapter four. Oh, I didn't know I was already on. Did I already do chapter three? Oh, chapter three was the pedal. Okay. All right. All right, y'all. My bad. I didn't know I was on chapter three uh, already. So I will be right back. I got to go do something very quickly. Uh, I won't be gone like a super long time, but I'll be right back after these short messages that won't be actually messages. You know what I'm saying? Hold on one second. I gotta go put my I gotta go put my kids down just for just for lack of better words. That's what's going on. I gotta go put my kids down real quick, but I'll be right back. Um, I'll run. I'm gonna run the starting soon screen real quick. Go put my my littles down. It won't be uh, a long time though. I promise. I promise. I'll be right back. <laughs>
My bad, y'all. I am back. I had to do a quick. I had to do a quick bedtime. I had to do a quick bedtime. Um, my littles are, yeah, my littles are a lot. My wife is, my my wife is a, uh, you know, she's sick right now. She's pregnant, so she ain't able to. She ain't, you know, she she ain't able to handle the littles all by her lonesome. Is there a lot? <laughs> so I put them down. Had to sing our little song, the the faster version of it. My daughter might be like, "Hey, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you What are you doing? Why aren't you Why aren't you singing me my seven minute song tonight? Like, hey, hey, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right, mamas. It's okay. I promise you, I still love you. <laughs> um, doing great was hanging out in the threefold land and then saw this. So we'll definitely have to watch back the first part. Hey, I definitely appreciate you, LBF. What chapter are we on? I think we just finished. I'm pretty sure we just finished three. Maybe I did. Maybe I went through it too fast. Maybe there's still more that I that we haven't talked about. No, 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 no. That's it. Oh, and then Egwene, of course, and her and uh, Rand's, you know, her and Rand's, you know, discussion. And then how Nynaeve uh, said, how Nynaeve was bagging on him. And then Egwene agreed with her. Egwene, like I said before, Hermione gives me such Egwene energy. Like, even rereading it, it just 
gave me such a just gave me such a Gwen energy seeing Hermione do what she be doing. And book Hermione is even more like a Gwen than than show or than movie Hermione, and it's probably the same way, vice versa. We're almost done with three. Yeah, I think we're all, I think we're going into four. We're at the beginning of four right now. There's memory research that's pretty good. Think of each name as a bit of information. A person can keep track of between five to name five to nine bits. It's why phone numbers are structured the way they are. Well, I'll be damned. That actually makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if people remember phone numbers these days, I remember those days. No. <laughs> hey, I remember a couple of phone numbers. Not a lot of them, though. Definitely going to get his Gleeman cloak. Hey, I need one for sure, for sure. Since these kids probably get the best stories, my my littles uh, love, since I, I make music, so they get songs. You know, I, I, uh, mom reads stories, dad sings songs. <laughs> Singing songs. I knew it was Gleeman related. Hey, yeah, you got you got it, LBF. I'm excited for chapter four because the real world references. Yeah. Not all who wander. Are, uh oh, I always read your name like it's a part of what you're saying. I don't know why. Oh, I hope your wife feels better soon. Yeah, she has some. She has. Yeah, there's. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I appreciate you. My wife got a lot. We, we're, we're dealing with a lot of stuff over over here in these parts. It's been a lot of stuff going on for a while. You feel me? But. Hey, you you just roll with the punches and you keep it going because the wheel weaves as the wheel weaves. <laughs> the wheel weaves as the wheel wheels. The door spun. The door of the end bangs shut. We got we got people. I'm telling you, people is kicking doors in, slamming doors everywhere. I was not ready for I was not ready for the Gleeman to pull up and he was immediately like, what the hell are you guys doing? Um, what sort of place is this? <laughs> the yokels in that village on the hill tell me I can get here before dark, neglecting to say that that was only if I left well before noon. When I finally do arrive, chilled to the bone and ready for a warm bed, your innkeeper grumbles about the hour as if I were a wandering sh as if I was a wandering swine herd. <laughs> and your village council hadn't begged me to display my art at this festival of yours. And he never told me he was the mayor. Yo, bro came in going off. And that was honestly hilarious. That had me rolling when he was going off. I was like, yo, why is he set tripping like this? I was just rolling. That that was hilarious. Uh, your pardon. That was our wisdom. That pretty little slip of a girl. What did you say about Nynaeve? <laughs> Bro, you better be happy Nynaeve didn't hear you because it would have been chitty chitty bang bang if she did. It would have been over if she heard you. Like, like, what? <laughs> but, like, what? Like, and of course, you know, I loved everyone smoking a pipe. You know, I'll be smoking a pipe. You know what I'm saying? Some of that tobacco. And then the fact that they knew each other, the Gleeman and the Peddler, of course. <laughs> parents snickered at and, and <laughs> parents snickered and Matt, who had been snickering, laughed out loud. Rand blinked in surprise. Egwene was glaring at him, and he had not even smiled. She straightened around and spoke in a too calm voice. Tripping. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is my boy Thom, Thom Marilyn. My name is Thom Marilyn, not Master Gleeman. <laughs> Yo, so Thom, my boy Thom, <laughs> he's definitely, I didn't, I, he's definitely, I knew he was saying, bro, that um, 
met the dark friend lady, right? But I just really <laughs> just <laughs> Yo, it's just it's just funny how different everyone is. He hitched the multi-hued cloak upon his shoulders and abruptly his voice once more seemed to reverberate in a great hall. <laughs> like what like yo the use of these words is just I, I love the way that it's using kind of the same terminology but in just many different ways because it's like yeah it kind of means the same thing as grabbed but it's not the same thing as grabbed because you're hitching it you know you're not hit you're not grabbing it you're hitching it it's, it's not the same oh and then i really love this part you almost have the size of an old gear close enough how how are you called like like, I love that. I'm afraid Rand and I are just ordinary folk, not made up creatures from your stories. Well, now, made up creatures from my stories. Is that what they are? You lads are widely traveled, then, it seems. <laughs> He's like, who do you think you're talking to, man? You think you've been around? You think you know something? Well, just you wait, my boy. My bad. I was looking for a specific part that I, I, but it's not here. I don't think. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You want stories? I have stories, and I will give them to you. I will make them come alive before your eyes. Tales of great wars and great heroes for the men and the boys, for the women and the girls. And the entire Aptar, what? The Aptar, Atargine cycle. Tales of Arthur P Pain Drag, uh, Tan Really, Arthur Hawking, Arthur the High King, once who ruled all the lands from the Aeol Waste to the uh, to the Arith Ocean and even beyond. Wondrous stories of strange people in strange lands, of the green men, of warders and trollocs, of or of Ogier and Aeel, the thousand tales of Anla, the wise counselor, giant, <laughs> yo, like, I, like, just going off. I just, oh, man, just going off. You don't, like, what? You don't know. You don't even know anything. You don't even know anything. You don't know anything about Arthur Pendragon. Old stories, those. Stories from the age before the age of legends, some say. Perhaps even older. The first time, I, I mean, I think this is the first time I've even heard of a mention of an age before the age of legends. If I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken, but damn. Um... Stories from the age before, so, da, da, da. but I have all stories, mind you now, of ages that were and will be. Ages when men ruled the heavens and the stars, and ages when men roamed as brother to the animals. Ages of wonder and ages of horror. Ages ended by fire raining from the skies, and ages doomed by snow and ice covering land and sea. I have all stories, and I will tell all stories. Tales of Mosk the Giant, with his lance of fire that could reach around the world, and his wars with Elsbet, the queen of all. Tales of Materis, the healer, mother of the wondrous end. Like, Bro, come on. Like, we are freaking cooking right now. Like, 
So cooking, abruptly the flow of words and the juggling alike stopped. Thom simply snatched the balls from the air and stopped talking. Unnoticed by Ran, Moiraine had joined the listeners. <laughs> Lan was at her shoulder, though he had to look twice to see the man. See, once again, that type of introduction, not introduction, but like another intro right there of you have to pay attention to see Lan. He's like Batman in this bitch. Uh, for a moment, Thom looked at Moiraine sideways, his face and body still except for making the balls disappear uh, into his capacious coat sleeves. Then he bowed to her, holding his cloak wide. Your pardon, but are you surely not from this district? <laughs> Moiraine made a small waving away gesture. None was perceived, Master Bard, and my name is simply Moiraine. I am indeed a stranger here, a traveler like yourself. Far from home and alone, the world can be a dangerous place when one is a stranger. <laughs> Yo, I am here for this, okay? I when I I'm like, what are we doing here now? It's going. We're going to a whole new world. We're going to a whole new place. We're getting all these things rapid fire shot at us, and then we immediately get introduced, not introduced, but reintroduced to Moiraine now from. This Gleeman's point of view, who knows all these stories, who have seen all, has uh, seen a lot of things. So he's immediately like, the late, you know, like it's just immediate, like, oh, the Lady Moiraine collects stories. <laughs> yes, 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 she does. I trust you will like my stories as well, Moiraine. That is a matter of taste, Master Bard. <laughs> some stories I like, and some I do not. Just, bro, just, just, I, I don't, yo, the way, the, the way that they, the banter goes back and forth between them, it's obviously showing us a lot of things. It's showing us a lot of things. It's showing us a lot of things. <laughs> and then Sin was was tripping. The mayor and the will and the wisdom seldom agree. Nynaeve always, well, right off the back, we find that Nynaeve be set tripping. We know, we know Nynaeve be, we be straight tripping. The Black Rider, what if he hurts somebody? Maybe he's a refugee from the war, Perrin said doubtfully. <laughs> Whatever he is, the watch will find him here. Maybe, but he seems to disappear when he wants to. It might be better if they knew to look for him. Like, bruh, like all of the discussion on whether they should tell him. And then Perrin coming through the same and being like, hey, we need to find someone that maybe is a little more believable than Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Everyone knows Matt is is Matt. Okay. Okay, now we're back with uh, Tam and Rand, it's chapter four. 
I, I, I appreciate seeing uh, Moiraine and Lan's horse. I like that. That was cool. You know what I mean? That was really nice. <laughs> that was really nice. Uh, a, a nice touch to going to the stable and seeing their horses and obviously knowing their horses are there because why because they don't they're, they're strangers so we know everyone's horses they obviously aren't here you know i love that that's awesome uh do, 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 do. People don't always think or behave the way you might believe they would. Those folk back there let the hail beat their crops into the into the mud, and the wind take off every roof in, roof in the district, and the wolves kill half their livestock, and they'll roll up their sleeves and start from scratch. They'll grumble, but they won't waste any time with it. But you give them just the thought of of Aes Sedai and the false dragon and Gil and Gildan, and soon enough they'll start thinking that Gildan is not that far the other side of the forest of shadows and a straight line from Tarvalon to Gildan wouldn't pass that much to east of us. As if Aes Sedai wouldn't take the road through Camelin and Lugard instead of traveling cross country, like just the small bits of. Why would they travel this way? It's inconvenient for them. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> what? Like, these are the things we're talking about, you know? I love, I don't know why I love it so much, but it's just, it's just that subtle world building and giving us these, these small bits of what's really happening and what's going on. It makes me just really excited. <laughs> uh... Did anyone besides Perrin see this strange rider? Matt did, but Rand blinked, then stared across Bella's back at his father. You believe me? I have to go back. I have to tell them like Bella's juice. He's like, bro, I gotta go. They'll know soon enough. At least Perrin will. Word must be gotten to the farms as it as best it can, but in another hour there won't be anyone in Eamon's Field above sixteen, uh, those who can be responsible about it at least, who doesn't know a stranger is skulking around and likely not the sort you would invite to festival. The winter has been bad enough without this to scare the young ones. Like Oh, here we go. Only young men see this fellow, it seems. When when Harold Luhan mentioned Perrin jumping at shadows, though, it all came out. John Thane's oldest son saw him too, and so did Samuel Craw's boy, Bandry. Well, when four of you, you've seen a thing and saw the lads all, we start thinking maybe it's whether, maybe it's there whether we can see it or not. All except Sin of, or Ken, of course. Sin, Ken, of course. Anyway, that's why we're going home. With both of us away, this stranger could be up to any kind of mischief there. If not for festival, I wouldn't come back tomorrow either. But we can't make ourselves prisoners in our own homes just because this fellow is lurking about. Oh, my God. And the decision that just destroyed everything and just made everything just so, just so sad. And I love the fact that, you know, it, he didn't even notice that his father wasn't tripping that he took his bow out. Like, his dad definitely knew he took out his bow. He just didn't say anything because he knew that there was something going on. And Rand just didn't know that he knew, so it was okay. You know what I mean? Like, subtle. Very subtle. Because his dad is definitely an observant person that would have been like, 
why do you have your bow out, boy, or something like that. You know what I mean? But he didn't because he knows why he has the bow out because the thing that he was telling him earlier is, in fact, true. Especially when so many diff all all the different kids saw them at the same time or, or saw them at different times in different places. That's one hell of a thing. All right, so that is chapter four, the Gleeman. Let's talk about it. Oh, ah, sorry. Okay. We all wondered where the Gleeman was in episode one, but of course it was because there were already too many characters. Oh, I see, I see. Rand is tall boy. <laughs> A.K.A. King Arthur? Yes. Anla, A.K.A. Ann Landers. Ooh. The fact that this tells us when... The fact that this tells us when Wheel of Time takes place. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, okay. Like, we're starting to, <laughs> we're starting to catch up to episode one events finally after six chapters. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm not I'm really not tripping like that. I'm just giving it a hard time. Um well it is okay to point out the real world parallels. Uh, please go over this entire section verbatim. I love it. I think I did. I believe we were talking. I think we're talking about the story of the Gleeman. Yes, please do. <laughs> yes, I think so. Oh, okay, okay. So we're talking about what the names mean. Elsbet, I mean. I want to go over all the real world parallels. It's fun and it's not really plot relevant for later. Oh, okay. Lynn is John Glenn. Salia is Sally Ride. Matrice the Healer is Mother Teresa. Uh, Jame the Giant Slayer is Jack and the Bean Slock. Oh, End is India. Not sure who Carol is, but I'm guessing RJ had a friend named Carol who cured her husband of snoring. <laughs> I feel that. That's that's funny. That's funny though. That's dope. Those are dope uh real world parallels for real. Uh I didn't know that there was that many of them. I knew about the King Arthur one and I think that's it. I don't, uh, out of the ones that you said though. I didn't know that they referenced Jack and the Beanstalk and stuff like that too. That's super dope. <laughs> Uh, it's basically the Cold War. Facts. That's, yeah, yes, it is the Cold War. Anla, the wise, wise counselor, equals Ann Landers of the famous Ask Ann newspaper column. Oh, shit. Elsbeth, queen of all, is Queen Elizabeth. Wow. Oh, so he was going crazy with that type of stuff. That's dope. By the way, Sensei, your copy of Eye of the World has the more detailed local maps, right? Uh, uh, maybe I, cause I know I have this map and that's just the, that's the regular map. So I think you're talking about the map that's at like the first chapter, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is the same map as the other one. Yeah, this is the same map. Just in color. Oh, wait, no, yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. I believe that's what you're talking about, Mari Sue.
It is super dope too. I had no idea that 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 this is what this was. Do you guys know if anyone has possibly made like a a this is probably the the most but like a travel chart type of thing? Oh, you know, Wheel of Time, Wheel of Time. Amazon Prime had the map and you could kind of follow the the story of what was going on. I wish this was doing something like that. I love being able to follow on a map and know where we're going. My head canon is King Dareth and the fall of the house of blank, blank, blank is a reference to Roderick Usher at, from fall of the house of Usher. Ooh. Ooh. I love the trust Tam puts in his son. He raised his son right, and he knows it. Exactly. Like, I honestly start tear tearing up thinking about it. It's definitely it's definitely deep. It's a deep connection. This is how we know Wheel of Time takes place in the future. We are in the age of before. Uh, this is how we know Wheel of Time takes place in the future. We are in the age before the age of legends. That's kind of what I got from reading that. That uh, the thing that bro that bro said, like when he said the age before the age of legends, I was like, yo, would that be us? Like, why? Do, like, I feel that. That's super dope. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love you guys. Uh, most and oh, Mosk and Merc are Moscow and Murica with their lances of fire, aka missiles. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's dope. That's actually insane. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. <laughs> that's heat. Not if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Yo, facts. Uh, Nablus has some great maps, but I forget how spoilery they are. Well, y'all do some research on that and let me know how spoilery the maps are so I can know whether I can get into them or not. And if y'all know any good map makers, let me know that too so I can get them doing stuff for my book. I definitely need maps down so I can know what the hell to do next. Or where to go next. Where they go next. Is there a river that they travel on? You know? All right. I am excited. Because the next two chapters are heat. The age of technology. The age of legends. And the third age. Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me. Rob Chris Christensen Rob Christensen made some great and classic Wheel of Time maps. Oh, I'm gonna have to look into is is that who I believe am I tripping or was Rob in the chat before? Or is that am I thinking of someone else that was in the chat that was a map maker that made the map that we were looking at that was in uh unraveling the patterns video? Or is that or am I tripping? Rob the designer has awesome Watt maps. Yo, yo. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Facts. Yeah, I think that was Rob that was in the chat that one time. That was probably Rob. Yes, Rob was here before. That was him. Okay, I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, he's dope. He did a great job with those. LBF Livingston agrees with you uh, that King Darth is a reference to Roderick, but he says it may also reference King Darius of Persia. What's up, it Rose Ford? How you doing? Hello there. I hope you're having a good one. And that's dope. <laughs> Ooh. 
wait, I was right. <laughs> my guy said, oh my God, I can't believe I was right. I just can't believe it. Hey, on a quick side note, uh, if y'all are into gaming stuff or know anyone that is into gaming stuff, you can tune in uh, on my esports channel uh, to tune in with Gamer Vision. Welcome to Gamer Vision. We cover topics related to content creation, gaming communities, streaming, new releases of games, and much, much more. Yes, sir. We'll be going live tomorrow, checking out some clips from different players and all that good stuff. So. If anybody is into the game and stuff, y'all can tune in to that, to Mizarro. Okay, let's get it, y'all. We going into chapter four. We going into chapter, no, we going into chapter five. We going into chapter five. We going into chapter five. You ready? Chapter five, Winter Night. Yo, I am. <laughs> uh... Here we go. When Rand took a look in the stone pen, the heavy horned herd ram looked back at him, but most of the black faced flock remained placidly where they lay or stood with their heads in the feed trough. Their coats were thick and curly, but it was still too cold for sheathing. Like, like for shearing. Like, come on. Once again, we are getting proper world building of what year it is. What? Well, not what year it is because the winter's been going too long. But we're getting proper, uh, you know, we're getting proper understanding of what's going on. They're not able to even shear the sheep because it's too cold and the sheep would die. So they can't even get the money from that. Like, there's so many things going on economically and uh hierarchy governmentally whatever you want to call it wise in the story so far that we're getting introduced to and that is freaking dope man Mm. And then it was hilarious being like, I'll, I'll start some stew for supper. As long as we're here, we might as well get caught up on a few chores. Like, yo, Rand's like, damn, my boy, I could have been at the place chilling. Like, I could have been chilling. Oh, I, I like this. Anything sounds, anything hot sounds good to me. Um, and sleep too for that. I might just sleep right through festival. Would you care to make a small wager about that? Like, boy, you know you ain't going, you know you ain't sleeping through that festival. You know you want to see your boys and you know you want to see Egwene. <laughs> um... Tam rooted around in a cabinet and came up with the key as long as his hand. He twisted it in the big iron lock on the door. At Rand's questioning look, he said, best to be safe. Maybe I'm taking a fancy, or maybe the weather is blacking my mood. But I'll see to the back door. And then he disappears to get to the back door. Like, And then if you don't remember that, then what happens later, you'll be completely confused about it. Oh, 
from overhead from Tam's bedroom came scraping as if something being dragged across the floor. Ran frowned. Unless Tam had suddenly decided to move the furniture around, he, on he could only be pulling out the old chest he kept under his bed. Another thing that had never been done in Rand's memory. Oh, shit. Like, like, <laughs> like we're doing the damn thing. Mm, yeah, the sword. I love this. I love them talking about the sword. He's like, yo, what in the world? This is no ordinary sword, you know? This is a completely different type of sword. This is not something that's, uh, you know, that is anyone would just have. We're poor. <laughs> we don't have these type of things. He's like, yo, I was trying to sell it or give it away. Why would Tam have bought a sword? He could not imagine. And where had Tam come by it? How far away? No one ever left the two rivers, or very few at least. He had always vaguely supposed his father must have gone outside. His mother had been an outlander. But a sword? He had a lot of questions to ask once they had settled at the table. <laughs> like, yo, he's like, bro, my dad doesn't have swords. That's not what my dad has. That's not who my dad is. That's not what my dad does, you know? <laughs> He's like, who are you and what have you done with my father? And I love that. I love the, because it's like, you have no, I, I mean, no, it's like my own son, you know? My own son has no idea about, you know, the... The, like who I who I am really because he's a he's still young and and that's my past you know everyone has a past everyone has a a past a present a future all that good stuff and it's like in this part of Tam's life he's not trying to he doesn't want to put any of that stuff on his son his wife is gone Tam, you know all these other things are are da, 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 da. so it's like why would we do these things why why would i tell you about all this stuff that i'm trying to keep behind me because i mean even though it's the reason why i got you you know what i'm saying like i love i love that i love that bit right there of just there's another life that his son knows nothing about because he knows nothing about it for a reason but him knowing nothing about it is also at the detriment of him the both of them As he straightened from the fire, a heavy thump at the door rattled the lock. All thoughts of the sword or the hot kettle in his hand flew away. One of the neighbors, he said uncertainly, Master Daughtry wanting to borrow... But the Daughtry farm, the ne their nearest neighbor, was an hour away even in the daylight, and Orrin Daughtry, shameless borrower that he was, was still not likely to leave his house by dark. Tam softly placed the stew-filled bowls on the table. Slowly, he moved away from the table. Both of his hands rested on his sword hilt. I don't think he began, and the door bust open, pieces of the iron lock spinning across the floor. A figure filled the doorway, bigger than any man Rand had ever seen. A figure in blackmail that hung to his knees with spikes at wrists and elbows and shoulders. One hand clutched a heavy scythe-like sword. The other hand was flung up before his eyes as if to shield them from the light. Rand felt the beginnings of an odd sort of relief. Whoever this was, it was not the black-cloaked rider. Then he saw the curled ram's horns on the head that brushed the top of the doorway and where mouth and nose one deep breath had... <laughs> And uh, should have been, wait, 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 and where mouth and nose should have been was a hairy muzzle. He took in all of it in the space of one deep breath that he let out in a terrified yell without thinking. He hurled the hot kettle at the half-human head. Oh, my God. 
God. Oh my God. The creature roared, part <laughs> the creature roared, part scream of pain, part animal snarl as boiling water splashed over its face. Even as the kettle struck, Tam's sword flashed. The roar abruptly became a gurgle, and the huge shape toppled back. Come on, son. Um, before it finished falling, another was trying to claw its way past. Ran glimpsed, a, a mishappen head toppled by, spike-like horns before Tam struck again, and two huge bodies blocked the door. He realized his father was shouting at him, run, lad, hide in the woods. Like, bruh, we're cooking, we're cooking, we're cooking. <laughs> We are cooking. Why was it not like in the yo like? <laughs> yo, yo, the way that they're destroyed, the, the, that they're described in this is just so much more terror. Like, yes, they're terrifying in the show, but I don't think it does the the the. It doesn't do this to let you know how they really look like. Like, oh my, like, <laughs> yo, yo, with a grunt, he heaved it over the tangle. There are too many to hold out the back. Go, go, I'll follow like, bro. And here we go. Here is when I was like, I don't think I'm ready for this book at all. This paragraph is what really got me hooked. Even as Rand turned away, shame filled that he obeyed so quickly. He wanted to stay and help his father, though he could not imagine how. But fear had him by the throat and his legs moved on their own. He dashed from the room toward the back of the house as fast as he had ever run in his life. Crash Crashes and shouts from the front door pursued him. He had his hands on the bar across the back door when his eye fell on the iron lock that was never locked. Except that Tam had done just that tonight, letting the bar stay where it was. He darted to a side window, flung open the sash, and threw back the shutters. Night had replaced twilight completely. The full moon and drifting clouds made dappled shadows chase one another across the farmyard. Shadows, he told himself, only shadows. The back door creaked as someone outside or something tried to push it open. His mouth went dry. A crash shook the door in its frame and lent him speed. He slipped through the window like a like a hare going to ground and cowered against the side of the house. Inside the room, wood splintered like thunder. Wood splintered like thunder is crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. He forced himself up to a crouch, made himself peer inside just, just with one eye. Yo, like, we are cooking. We are cooking, yo. Like, just with one eye, just as the corner of the window in the dark, he could not make out much but more than he really wanted to see. The door hung askew and shadowed shapes moved cautiously into the room talking in low guttural voices rand understood none of what was said the language sounded harsh unsuited to a human tongue axes and spears and spiked things <laughs> dully reflected stray glimmers of moonlight boots scraped on the floor and there was a rhythmic click as who of hooves as well Oh man, Chef Boyar Jordan, boy. Chef Boyar J. This man was in the kitchen cooking with Crisco. He tried to work moisture back in his mouth. Pause. Drawing a deep, ragged breath, he shouted as hardly as he could. They're coming in the back. <laughs> like, no, like, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. The words came out in a croak, but at least they came out. He had not been sure they would. I'm outside. Run, father, with the last word. He was sprinting away from the farmhouse. Boy, he was moving. And I see him moving. 
Coarse voice shouts in the strange tongue raised from the back room. Glass shattered, loud and sharp, and something thudded heavily to the ground behind him. He guessed one of them had broken through the window rather than trying to squeeze through the opening, but he did not look back to see if he was right. Like a fox running from hounds, he darted into the nearest moon cast shadows as if headed for the woods, then dropped to his belly and slithered back to the barn and its large, larger, deeper shadows. Something fell across his shoulders and he thrashed about, not sure if he was trying to fight or escape. Idiot. He's an idiot for a moment. He lay there trying to stop. Coplin, fool idiot. <laughs> At last, he crawled along on, uh, <laughs> on along the the back of the barn. My boy was moving. Oh, oh, uh, suddenly one of the windows burst outward in a shower of glass and wood as Tam leaped through it, sword still in hand. He landed on his feet, but instead of running away from the house, he dashed toward the back of it, ignoring the monstrous thing scrambling after him through the broken glass in the doorway. Rand stared in disbelief. Why was he not trying to get away? Then he understood. Tam had last heard his voice from the rear of the house. Father, he shouted, I'm over here. <laughs> In mid-stride, Tam whirled not around, not running toward Ran, but at an angle, running away from him. Run, lad, he shouted, gesturing with the sword as if to someone ahead of him. Hide! A dozen huge forms screamed after him, harsh shouts and shrills, howls, <sighs> shivering the air. Oh, my God. Oh, no, I lost my place. No, I'm back. Like, bro... Like what he was, he like Tam is not, Tam is built for this for a lack of better words. He built for this. This is what he does. This is why he didn't sell the sword because of this moment right here. He needed it to save his child. He needed it to save his son <laughs> and save his son. He did and save his son. He did what If I move like a stalking rap, no, 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 I don't really care on that far. Oh, yeah, 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 I guess we can talk about that a little bit. Um, Tam, who was trying to lead those things away from him, his hands tightened on the hoe handle. He was about to go whoop some ass with that hoe. Uh, if I move like I was stalking a rabbit, they'll never see me or heal me or hear they'll never hear me or see me more like a pack of starving wolves uh <laughs> yeah that's facts um uh let's see let's see suddenly a hand closed over his mouth from behind and an iron grip seized his wrist frantically he called over his shoulder with his free hand for some hold of the attacker don't break my neck lad <laughs> he's like bro it's me Yo. When his father released him, he fell to his hands and knees, gasping as if he had run for miles. Tam dropped down beside him, leaning on one elbow. I wouldn't have tried that if I thought how if I thought wait, if I had thought how much you've grown in the last few years. But I had to make sure you didn't speak out. Some Trollocs can hear like a dog, maybe better. But Trollocs are just... Rand let the words trail off. Not just a story. Not after tonight. Those things could be Trollocs, or the Dark One himself for all he knew. Are you sure? he whispered. I mean, Trollocs? I'm sure. Though what brought them to the two rivers... I never saw one before tonight, but I've talked with men who have, so I know a little. Maybe enough to keep us alive. Listen closely. A trollic can see better than a man in the dark, but bright lights blind them, for a time at least. That may be the only reason we got away from so many. Some can track by scent or sound, but they're said to be lazy. If we can keep out of their hands long enough, they should give up. In the stories, they hate men and serve the Dark One. If anything, be, if anything belongs in the Shepherd of Night's flocks, lad, it is Trollocs. They kill for the pleasure of killing, so I've been told. But that's the end of my knowledge. E except that they cannot be trusted unless they're afraid of you, and then not far. 
Rand shivered. He did not think he would meet anyone a Trollic was afraid of. Do you think they're still hunting us? Like, bruh, fantastic. This is just fantastic. Creeping from tree to tree, tried to make a plan. He's sneaking towards the thing. He's like, bro, I gotta get up out of here. And he was doing it for sure. They ended up killing everything in the in there. They was just murdering stuff. Like what? At the front of the house, he lay close beside the wall, beneath the broken window, and listened. The, the dull thudding of blood in his ears was the loudest sound he heard. Slowly, he reared up and peered inside. The stew pot lay upside down in the ashes of, of the earth. Splintered, broken, and littered, wait, splintered, blo broken wood littered the room. Not a single piece of furniture remained whole. Even the table t rested at an angle. Two legs hacked to rough stubs. Every drawer had been pulled out and smashed. Every cupboard and cabin stood open, and cabinet stood open. Many doors hanging by one hinge. Their contents were strewn over everywhere. Um, uh, and everything was dusted with white. Flour and salt to judge from the slashed sacks tossed down by the fireplace. Four twisted bodies made a tri made a tangle in the remnants of the furnishings. Trollocs. Rand recognized one by its rams. The others were much the same. Even in their differences, a repulsed malang melange Melange of human faces distorted by muzzles, horns, feathers, and fur. Their hands, almost human, only made it worse. Two wore boots. The others had hooves. He watched without blinking until his eyes burned. None of the Trollocs moved. They had to be dead. And Tam was waiting. He ran in through the front door and stopped gagging at the stench. <laughs> uh... A stable that had not been mucked out in months was the only thing he could think of that might come close to matching it. Vile smears defiled the wall. Trying to breathe through his mouth, he hurriedly began poking through the mess on the floor. There had been a water bag in one of the cupboards. A scraping sound behind him sent a chill to his marrow, and he spun, almost falling over the remains of the table. He caught himself and moaned behind teeth that would have chattered had he not had them clenched until his jaw ached. One of the Trollocs was getting to its feet. A wolf's muzzle jutted out below sunken eyes, flat, emotionless, and all too human. Harry pointed two ears, twitched incessantly. It stepped over one of its dead companions and sharp, with sharp on sharp goat hooves. The same black male the others wore rasped against leather trousers and one of the huge scythe-curved swords swung at its side. It's, it muttered something guttural and sharp, then said, Others go away. Narks stay. Narks smart. <laughs> The words were distorted and hard to understand, coming from a mouth meant for human speech. Its tone was meant to be soothing, he thought, but he could not take his eyes off of stained teeth, long and sharp, that flashed every time the creature showed. Narg knows some back sometimes. Narg, wait. You no need sword. Put sword down. Until the Trolloc spoke, Rad had not realized that he held Tam's sword, wavering it before bo him in both hands. A point aimed at the huge creature. It towered in shoulders above him with the chest arms to dwarf Master Luhan. 
And I love those circling back around to Master Luhan when we've been using him to basically determine how strong or how big someone's arms are in relative size to him. Awesome. Narg no hurt. It took a step closer gesturing. You put sword down. The dark hair on the backs of its hands was thick like fur. Stay back, Rand said, wishing his voice were steadier. Why did you do this? Why? I don't know. I can't read that. The snarl quickly became a toothy smile. Put sword down. Narg no hurt. Me Jeral won't talk to you. Like, why is this? Why is he talking? Why is he talking? Um, a flash of emotion crossed the distorted face. Fear. Others come back. You talk, Mithral. It took another step, one big hand coming to rest on its sword hilt. You put sword down. Rand wet his lips. Midral, the worst of the stories, was walking tonight. If a fade was coming, it made a trollic pale by comparison. He had to get away. But if the trollic drew that massive blade he had, uh, he would not have a chance. He forced his lips into a shaky smile. All right. Grip tightening on the sword, he let both hands drop to his sides. I'll talk. The, wor the wolf's smile became a snarl and the trollic lunged for him. S Rand had not thought anything that big could move so fast. Desperately, he brought his sword up. The monster's body crashed into him, slamming a kim against the wall. Breath left his lungs one in one gasp. He fought for air as they fell to the floor together. The trollic on top. Frantically, he struggled beneath the crushing weight, trying to avoid thick hands groping for him. and snapping jaws. Abruptly, the trollic spasmed and was still, battered and bruised, half suffocated by the bulk on top of him. For a moment, Rand could only lie there in disbelief. Quickly, he be quickly he came to his senses, though, enough to writhe out from under the body, at least. And body it was. Like, bruv. We are so in, we are so in it to win it. Like, this is awesome. This is amazing. Like, Okay, and I'm, I'm going to come back to this, of course. Why can they talk and nobody has told me anything? Like, why did we not know that they could talk? Like, what? They definitely couldn't talk in the show, right? Like, I'm not tripping. I don't think they talked, at least. Uh, bucket of water... Sheep pen, barn doors, wind, despair. No time for wonder. Blows out the lantern. Back in the forest. He's back to Tam. I'll get you to Nine Eve just as quick as I can. Bam. Okay, that is chapter five. Yo, let's talk about chapter five. Oh my God, this is just too good. I, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> this book is so fantastic, man. <laughs> Come on, close, close, close. This book is amazing. <laughs> Like, oh, man. Let's scroll, let's scroll, let's scroll. Let's see how we're doing. We almost to Narg, yo. <laughs> That's all everyone was waiting for is Narg. I knew y'all was waiting for Narg. That's why I had to throw a little bit of spice on there. Don't expect voices often. Uh, can't remember where you live, but if it's anywhere that has snow, one great way of making fantasy maps is to watch a path of snow melting to dry ground. The snow forms crazy natural lands, cool, crazy natural landscapes. Yeah, I'm nowhere near snow. Well, I, I guess I got some snow near me, but I'm in Cali. We, ain't, we don't have snow where I live. It hasn't snowed where I lived, like, in the 2000s ever. Like, the last time it snowed was, like, in 1998. <laughs> Not even joking. Um, chapter 5 of Eye of the World could be submitted for awards if there was a Golden Globes for books. Why isn't there? Why isn't there, like, a award thing for books? Books are so popular. I feel like, 
I don't know. I feel like books are like super, uh, not unsung, but yeah, unsung. Like I don't think they get the 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 credit they deserve in the same way, uh, or at least the spotlight. Unless you're in that era, but I guess that's how every genre of media or uh, every genre of just nerding is. If you're not in it, you don't see it. So now that I'm in it, I'll probably see a lot more stuff. Uh, one bit where I appreciate the show is the lantern ceremony they invented for winter night. Oh, yeah, that is cool. Yeah, that is really cool. I, I, that was a really good point uh, or a good addition. It's so concise yet so good. They should have answered the door like do they like they do in Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. It's Narg. Who is it? <laughs> Narg smart. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> LOL, exactly, Marisu. Narg talk you good. Narg know sometimes they come back. <laughs> Yo. Oh, right. Prob uh, probably not Narg yet. Narg smart and waits for others to go in first. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Isn't this such a book? A, a book and a half. I'm not going to lie to you. This book is fantastic. Um... When the cops shows up, when the cops show up, there's no shame in running. Nah, LBF, that's wild. Uh, definitely cooking, Chef Boyard J. Uh, Tam is goat. Narg smart, but Tam smarter. Big facts. We all wish Tam was our dad. I I agree. I agree. I agree. Rand's saving grace is he was raised right. Narg was raised right too. His parents made sure he got a good education. I'm thinking of Hubbard. Uh, I am smart. S M R T. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, Narg softly hums. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. <laughs> Enter Narg. What a mess. <laughs> Narg. Narg smart. <laughs> Nar. Narg. Narg smart. <laughs> uh. Hi, y'all. Sorry I'm late. Had D&D. &D. Hello there. Yo, Mads Dagger. What's up with it, Mads Dagger? How you doing? Hope you're having a good one. Perfect timing. It's narc time. <laughs> Facts. Better late than never, baby. Whoa. I'm wearing my narc smart shirt right now. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Definitely perfect. Rand's first kill is a whoopsie daisy. Facts. He was like, ah, pulled up the sword at the last second and got a kill. <laughs> Nar could talk in the show. He just chose not to. <laughs> Like, why, why didn't they talk in the show? <laughs> when Bruh started talking, I was like, <gasps> like, literally, I, <laughs> I lost it once, once he started talking. I was like, well, holy moly. <laughs> unplug that show brain. Yes, I, I, oh, trust me. I know I got to unplug the brain. Narc. Uh, the way I would have just magically learned instant transmission if these monsters showed up at my house. Yo, dead ass. I'd have been out of there. I would have thanked my parents for their service and dipped if Trollic showed up at our house. Thanked my parents for their service is diabolical, Marisu. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. That is actually freaking comedy. Oh my god. Huh. Dropped a pic uh in Marvel Bro Discord of my Narc Smart. Narc Smart. Definitely go check that out if you're in the cord. If you're in the Discord, definitely go check that out. Go check that out. It would be a lot for me to show it right now. I'm sorry, or else I would do it. But if, uh, if you ain't in the Discord, <clears throat> Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue, um, you know, hit the link. It should be a link popping up. I don't see a link popping up, but it should pop up. Give it a sec. Uh, but 
But yeah, yo, what a hell of a chapter. Like, what a hell of a chapter, for real, for real. Chapter 5 definitely did its thing, man. Like, they, they, they were going crazy for Chapter 5. The fact that they were talking definitely threw me all the way off. I wasn't ready. And I also wasn't ready. Like, I knew that they were, like, human combined-ish. Because I know you guys kind of said something about that, you know? Uh, but, damn, I didn't know to that it was to this point, you know? Like, man, that's so... Like, what a fantastical job of just setting up everything for us and letting us know what the hell is about to be going down and what we're about to be really doing and getting into. I love the fact that one has like a wolf's face. The other has a snout. The other has a muzzle. Like all these other things. Like I love every ounce of that because it just adds so much more variety to what these actual creatures are. <laughs> man, bear, pig is crazy. Y'all are hilarious. They're half man, half bear, half pig. Man, bear, pig. Like, yo, what? Y'all be so on the same page. It's hilarious um but yes they are man bear pigs and i was definitely and i'm super ethereal when i say like i did not expect for the man bear pig to talk like super ethereal i i was just i just did not know that that was about to happen um the mention of madral of course and then Rand was like oh man are you talking are you telling me there's a fade around here and i just really love that like oh man because at that point, it's like, okay, none of this stuff is uh, is make-believe anymore. It's all real. So if the fade is here and the fade is true, then we know that we got to get the hell up out of Dodge, baby. Uh, yeah. I think those are kind of like, you know, those, obviously, we kind of talked about those moments already. Like, man, that was just such a fan. Like, this chapter was definitely my favorite chapter. Like, when I continue, I'm going to go back and go through chapter 5 again. And then go through chapter 6 through the next part. For sure. Like, 100% for sure. Okay. Let's see. We're about to go on to chapter six and get it pit pop plopping and schlopping. Let me see where I don't know if there was anything in this part that I wanted to read. Oh, yeah, this this is a good chapter, actually. This is a super good chapter and another interesting bout of information that we did not have uh in the show and i'm not comparing it to the show i'm just saying it's awesome to me the thing even whenever i talk about the show i'm not really comparing it i'm just kind of pointing out the differences you know what i mean and i if there's not a diff if that doesn't mean different things then my bad uh but in my head that doesn't mean the same thing right like i'm pointing out like oh this is different from that and i like the way that this was done um, and I like the way that that was done also. Like, I don't want to say that I'm comparing them to each other saying which one is better or which one is worse necessarily, but I am saying like, okay, from the standpoint of like, this is what happens in the book versus this is what happens in the show. That's it. This is cool. Like, you know, I guess that is comparing it. Am I comparing it? I guess I'm comparing it, but I'm not comparing it to say this is better or this is ass or anything like that. I'm just saying like, Hey, I like this a lot. <laughs> I like this a lot. Half bird, half ram is crazy. I still want a hippo trollic. Nah, a hippo trollic is crazy. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills with this Discord stuff. I try to follow all the steps, and my iPad just isn't having it. Hey, Marisu, it's okay. We know that technology is not, you know, something that was around while you was growing up all the way. So it's still something that you're getting used to. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I think we did get this in the show, but in a flashback in episode seven. Yeah, I, my bad. I kind of meant more that it took that's I kind of meant like in that way that it took a long time for us to find it out. I, I didn't mean we didn't find it out at all. I did misspeak. That's my bad. Um, but, you know, like it's just kind of interesting that we didn't get to know that just yet. Now you know why Who is the Dragon felt weird for us book readers. You know, from chapter six, it's ran. Like, yeah, like, that. that's what I was definitely confused about. Like, it definitely shows us a different side of what's going on. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I have to go to bed. It's almost 12.30 a.m. here. Sleep well and wake, y'all. <laughs> All right, Cherie, sleep well and wake. You have a good one. It is on a 9.30 here, so that's why I'm I'm up and chilling. Um, but I definitely appreciate you for chilling with us, Sharice, uh, and I hope you have a good rest of your night. Hey, I'm older. <laughs> Hey, you see, even Matt is saying, "Hey, I, even I'm old and I understand it." Mari Sue, you gonna dang? That's crazy! Wow. Uh, sleep well and wakes in the chat for Mar oh yeah, sleep well and wake in the chat for Sharice. Let's get some saws, some swaz. Let's get some swaz in the chat. Uh, you did not just laugh track me. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, but I had to. It was right there. I was staring right at the button. I was like, I, it, it's telling me to press it. I have to press the button. It's, it's literally calling to me. Sensei, press me. That's what happened. So the button got pressed. I'm sorry. And Remy was laughing. Just wanted to let you know. Um... Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see, where are we now? Oh yeah, Tam is definitely poisoned. Uh, Trollocs, Trollocs everywhere. You have to keep quiet. You're still lovely, Kari. Still lovely as a girl. Ran grimaced. His mother had been dead 15 years. If Tam believed she was still alive, then the fever was even worse than Rand had thought. How could he be kept from speaking now that silence might mean life? Mother wants you to be quiet, Rand whispered. He paused to clear his throat of a sudden tightness. She had, she had had gentle hands. He remembered that much. Kari wants you to be quiet. Here, drink. Tam gulped thirstily from the water skin, but after a few swallows, he turned his head aside and began murmuring softly, too low for Rand to understand. He hoped it was too low to be heard by hunting Trollocs. Hastily, he got on with what was needed. Three of the blankets he, he wove around in between the shafts cut from the cart, contriving a makeshift litter. Okay, he lifts them. They leave. Let's see. Uh. Let's see. Let's see. When Tam, okay, no, we already, not already, but let's kind of get through that stuff a little bit quicker. Because he's, he's initially just carrying my boy through the trees. He's carrying Pops through the trees. Hate, uh, sneakily.
I love how he remembered the taste of the honey cakes from earlier in the day. Like that was, I, I just like the callbacks. You know what I mean? The callbacks are cool. They're, they're small, but everything kind of does matter. <laughs> it's like honey cakes he ate earlier. When did he eat honey cakes? It's like, okay, you weren't listening then. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. They came over the dragon wall like a flood and washed the land with blood. How many died for Laman or for Lamont's sins? There isn't any flood of Trollocs, father. Not now, anyway. We'll be safe in in Iman's field soon. Drink a little water. They called them so. They called them savages. The fools said they could be swept aside like rubbish. How many battles lost? How many cities burned? <laughs> oh, shit. <coughs> the hell out of me um how many cities burned before they faced the truth before the nation stood together against them the field that marath carpeted with the dead and no sound but the cries of ravens and the buzzing of flies the topless towers of carrion uh burning in the night like torches all the way to the shining walls they burned and slew before they turned back all the way to ran clamped a hand over his father's mouth the sound came again a rhythmic thudding directionless in the trees fading then growing stronger again as the wind shifted frowning he turned his head slowly trying to decide whether where it came a flicker of motion caught the corner of his eye and in an instant he was crouched over tam he was startled to feel the hilt of the sword clutched tight in his hand but most of him concentrated on the quarry road as if the road were the only real thing in the entire world look at that you see that they're they're letting us know that he has a spidey sense for whooping ass Wavering shadows to the east slowly resolved themselves into a horse and rider, followed up the road by tall, bulky shapes trotting to keep up with a with the animal. The pale light moon glittered from spearheads and axe blades. Rand even considered that they might be villagers coming to help. He knew what they were. He could feel it like grit scraping his bones. Even before they drew close enough for moonlight to reveal the hooded cloak swathing the horsemen, a cloak that hung undisturbed by the wind. <laughs> Yo! That is so fire. All of the shapes appeared black in the night, and the horses' hooves made the same sounds than that any others would, but Rand knew this horse from any other. Behind the dark rider came nightmare forms with horns and muzzles and beaks, trollocs in a double file, all in steps, boots and hooves, striking the ground at the same instant, as if obeying a single mind. Rand couldn't rand counted 20 as they ran past he wondered what kind of man would dare turn his back on so many trollocs or on one for that matter the trotting column disappeared westward thumping footfalls fading into the darkness but rand remained where he was not moving a muscle except to breathe something told him to be certain absolutely certain they were gone before he moved at long last, he drew a deep breath and began to straighten. This time, the horse made no sound at all. In eerily silence, the dark rider returned, his shadowy mount stopping every few steps as it walked slowly back down the road. The wind gusted higher, moaning through the trees. The horseman's cloak lay still as death. Whenever the horse halted, that hooded head swung side to side as the rider peered into the forest, searching. Exactly opposite ran the horse, stood up, stopped again, the shadowed, the shadowed opening of the hood turning towards where he crouched above his father. Rand's hand tightened convulsively on the sword hilt. He felt the gaze, just as he had that morning, and shivered again from the hatred even he could not see it. 
The shrouded man hated everyone and everything, everything that lived, despite the cold wind, sweat beaded on Rand's face. The, then the horse was moving on, a few soundless steps and stopped, until all Rand could see was a barely distinguishable blur in the night far down the road. It could have been anything, but he had not taken his eyes off it for a second. If he lost it, he was afraid the next time he saw the black-cloaked rider might be when the silent horse was on top of him. Pause. Abruptly, the shadow was rushing back, passing him in a silent gallop. The, the rider looked only ahead of him as he sped westward into night, toward the mountains of mist, toward the farm. Ran sagged, gulping air, scrubbing cold sweat off his face from his sleep with his sleeve. He did not care any more about why the Trollocs had come. If he never found out why, that would be fine, just as long as it was all ended. With a shake, he gathered himself, hastily checking his father. Like, bro, we are cooking yet again. I am so excited. Like, this is just so beautiful. And he's just taking care of his father and slowly, slowly going through it. Like, yes, yes. James Foley and Heron on the Wing. Harold Luhan would have one too many brandies and start singing. The wind in the Bali in a vase like a bullfrog. He always did until his wife managed to shush him. <laughs> Avendesona. It said makes no seed. Only that morning he might have felt foolish at musing over the the green man and the tree of life they were only stories are they trollocs were just stories this morning maybe all the stories were real as the news the peddlers and merchants brought all the gentlemen's tales and all the stories told at night in front of the fireplace next he might actually meet the green man or an orgear giant or a wild black veiled aielman or a wild black veiled aielman Tam was talking again, he realized, sometimes only murmuring, sometimes loud enough to understand. From time to time, he stopped to pant for breath, then went on as if he thought he had been speaking the whole time. Battles are always hot, even in the snow. Sweat, heat, blood heat. Only death is cool. Slope of the mountain. Only pace didn't stink of death. Only place didn't stink of death. Had to get away from the smell of it, sight of it. Heard a baby cry. Their woman, their women fight alongside the men sometimes. But why they had let her come, I don't. Gave birth there alone, before she died of her wounds. Covered the child with her cloak. But the wind blown the cloak away. Child, blue with cold. Should have been dead too, crying there crying in the snow i couldn't just leave a child no children of our own always knew you wanted children i knew you'd take it to your heart kari yes lass rand is a good name a good name oh no <laughs> oh Suddenly, Rand's legs lost the little strength they had. Stumbling, he fell to his knees. Tam moaned with the jolt, and the strip of blanket cut into Rand's shoulders. But he was not aware of either. If a trollic had leaped up in front of him right then, he would have just stared at it. He looked over his shoulder at Tam, who had sunk back into a wordless murmurs. Fever dreams, he thought dully. Fevers always brought bad dreams, and this was a night for nightmares even without a fever. You are my father, he said aloud, stretching back a hand to touch Tam, and I am. The fever was worse, much worse. Grimly, he struggled to his feet. Tam murmured something about Rand refused to listen to any more. Throwing his weight against the improvised harness, he tried to put all of his mind into taking out one leading step after another 
into reaching the safety of Eamon's field, but he could not stop the echo in the back of his mind. He is my father. It was just a fever dream. He's my father. It was just a fever dream. Light, who am I? <laughs> awesome <laughs> yo <laughs> oh just beautiful just beautiful ladies and gentlemen i love it this story is amazing let's get back into chat and see how we're doing did you see what moiraine did to land and that horse probably not difficult to imagine uh -huh. Uh, it gotta be something in my privacy settings that Discord doesn't like, but I can't figure what it is. Um, have you downloaded it from the app or are you trying to log into it on the web browser? Cause you can do both. I'm pretty, you can, you can do both. I'm pretty sure. You got a smartphone, Marisu? If so, you should be able to join with the Discord app. Yeah. Facts with the Discord app or through the web browser. If you're on a computer and or a laptop. You might have to like make it on the laptop and then do it through there or something like that, but I don't think so. It's too bad you can't DM people on YouTube. I'd help set I'd help you set up Discord, Mary Sue. Yeah, for real, that is unfortunate. Cause Remy could definitely help you out there. Tam is just so awesome. We get a glimpse of his unending love for his wife and his dedication to rand such good writing to get all the insight yeah it is truly impeccable writing uh so far like just covering all the stuff like it's really really like i i'm having a lovely time with this story honey cakes is probably rand's pet name for a gwain that's hilarious <laughs> And she hates it when he calls her that. That'd be a funny nickname since that's her mom who makes the cakes. <laughs> that's why she hates it. <laughs> her mom made her too. Nah, that's crazy. That's crazy. By the way, there's no mention of Bella yet, and I feel like that's offensive. There's not? I thought I thought there was a mention of Bella. Bella knows when to be stealthy. Bella, sorry instinct. Bella horse do to do the do. Bella horse do to do the do. Bella horse do to do the do. Bella horse. <laughs> you can't just call a man green. Sheesh. Only his thumb. <laughs> Season one, season one, episode seven, cold open. Again, another amazing example of them showing something that was told in the story. I love it. The blood snow. Also, flashback moment later in episode seven when Rand admits to himself that he's the dragon. Facts. And that's the cliffhanger, folks. Man. The show killed the... Uh, blood snow that fight was so good yeah that shit was awesome to be able to see that and to know that it was literally just a wink of a mention here like what the blood snow was so good like hire those folks to direct all the fight scenes big facts because that was impeccable truly though that fight was crazy me and battery didn't know what to do at that fight scene it was awesome it was definitely awesome Oh, whoa. My body popped a lot just now. <laughs> uh, yo, man, what 
a amazing just what an amazing just time we've had <laughs> oh my goodness like mm, that was just so awesome it was just like this story i just can't wait to continue it and now that i'm in it it's like I'm in it to win it. Like I'm gonna be reading today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Sensei, you want to give some idea how you like this length for one week? Uh, I I liked this length. Length. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the only re I was just super busy. I had I had a, a meeting with some investors for my org. Uh, on Wednesday, and that's the only reason why I wasn't able to finish the reading. Um, but now I think we can keep rocking. The next chapter lengths that we're supposed to do is seven through eleven. <coughs> seven through eleven. Uh, next week on Wednesday is that still applicable? Uh. see something uh oh there we go So this is supposed to be the next stint uh, that we do. I guess that's too small to see. Jesus. Uh Bam. Okay, my bad, y'all. Uh yeah, so this is the this is supposed to be the Oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's cool. Uh this is supposed to be the stint for this week. Uh, for this next week right here is chapter is seven chapter seven through eleven. I know this looks crazy. My bad. Let me do it like this. Oh, wait, can I undo that? Oops. Okay, let's try that again. Chapters, date. Replace all. There we go. So let me, how is this looking? Is this still still this is this still good or should this get changed a little bit? If you didn't know that Aiel Welcome to Game Revision. We cover topics related to content creation, gaming communities, streaming, new releases of If you didn't know that Aiel Rand's mom is the main stunt coordinator for the show. <laughs> that Aiel goes crazy. What? I had no idea that she was the main stunt coordinator. That's fuck that's awesome cuz she definitely goes crazy and she needs to be a, a stunt coordinating more stuff.
The Blood Snow was shot with a special programmable camera roboter that is you that is supposedly very expensive. Whoa. What? That's crazy. Get used to that. It happens every time I get up now. That's crazy. Do you want to decrease or increase the chapter count? Um, I'm not I'm not really tripping. I'm not really tripping. I, I'm pretty sure this is what we had kind of like created the last time we had talked, but you know, I'm not really tripping. The Bolt camera. That sounds dope. Thanks for the fun night. Sh thanks for the fun night shift. I just got off work. Hey, let's go. Ty on getting off work. Facts. Big Ty on getting off work. Hope you had a good shift. Pick either chapter 10 or 11 or 12. I checked earlier today, and that's what I suggest. Hmm. Depends on if you want to stop on a cliffhanger or not. Oh, okay. I understand. I'd prefer going to 12. All right. 12 it is. Uh, so this is 12 and then this is 13. Is this, are we still going to like this? I'm just going to do this and then we can change it if we need to. Is that right? Or am I changing too much? Those ads are nice, but they are super loud and blew my earbuds a few times tonight. I understand that. That's uh, This is all new stuff, so they're, they are probably dumbass loud, and that's my bad. Because I definitely have not went through them and turned shit down yet. Because I had to re-add everything. So I will turn those down. Is this looking good? We might go to 20 the third week. But you probably won't have a problem with that because of adrenaline. Okay, let's go 1320 then. And then 20 to 24 after that to relax. Is that is that is that right? And then so on and so forth. Well, this would be 21. Just going to say chapter nine is, wait, where's, oh, 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 that's why, let's bring it down. We might go to 20 the third week, but you probably won't have a problem with that because of adrenaline. Let's go to 20, 21 to 24. I say big chunk of chapters. Mm, I understand. Uh, we will slow down in places because some sections are more confusing. I understand that too. All right, so next week, 7 to 12 for sure. So next week will be the Wheel of Time, the Eye of the World, uh, from Watcher to Reader, episode two, and we'll be covering chapters seven through twelve. That sounds like a plan to me. I hope it sounds like a plan to y'all too. Hmm. Mm, damn. Oh, 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 oh. My body's getting a little tight.
I love what we read this week. Uh, th- this was a f- awesome first official first episode for our uh, book club stuff. We've finally read some book uh, for the club. Let me know how y'all feel about the way we kind of you know we like went over the book today. If you guys have any other suggestions on how I should maybe cover it, um, if y'all don't want me to read, let me know. Um, I kind of like the reading, though, because it just definitely puts me back in the moment of what's going on and and the hype and all that stuff. But I understand if you guys don't like that type of style as well. But I definitely want you guys to let me know how you're feeling about everything and what the strat is. So, uh, yeah. Remember, there's 14.5 books. Yeah, but I don't think we're going to be reading every single book back to back because I still want to go into a lot of the non uh, like I still want to go into everything blind, like as far as the show goes. So I won't be reading like once we get to once we get up to the show, I'm not reading anymore until we get the next season. So we will probably go into another book club or I might keep reading if I if I'm just if I can't put it down and we're just really going in deep. But, you know, you know what I'm saying? So just let me know, like, let me know what's happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, But. Yeah, so because we'll, we'll, we're definitely going to get into other books uh, like the Brandon Sanderson stuff. That's probably what we'll do is we'll read Wheel of Time until we get all cut up to the actual show. And then we'll get into all the Brandon Sanderson stuff because we'll actually be able to read all of that stuff to its fullest thing. And then we'll start doing requests for different book clubs and stuff like that as well. Um, because uh, kind of that, I guess that's kind of the vibe I want to do it is go kind of book by book by book as like a request, and then the other book is like okay, um, my bad, like by request, and then by what I want to read, and then by request, and then by how, what I want to read too. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know what I mean? I like, yeah. So I really want to continue to have a fun time and nerd the hell out with y'all uh this was such a solid night hey i'm happy that it was a solid night i think it was a solid night as well and i love being here with y'all y'all are awesome big shout out and round of applause to the to you guys um because you guys definitely make it fun uh to be here and to nerd out for sure you guys definitely deserve all of the love um for sure for sure y'all y'all definitely are the goats I like the reading. Okay, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I like to read in two. Uh, do read. It helps us know what gets you pumped. Oh, okay, bet. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, well, y'all are, I already know. I like those action moments for sure. But I also like the moments where we're kind of taking in the taking in a moment to kind of see what's going on and and getting you know getting more. I guess you can say. Uh, immersed in everything. Like I am so. I am so tempted to start highlighting and underlining stuff because that's how deep I go into stuff when I'm like reading and watching stuff or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? I love how much detail you're going into on these reads makes more sense on the pace to not catch up to the show too soon. Yeah. I don't want to catch up to the show too soon because then it's like, Oh man, (laughs) now I don't get to read anymore. (laughs) Uh, I'm looking forward to Comic Book Club, honestly. Been a while since I've done that. Oh, yeah. Comic Book Club is going to be awesome. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what to, like, when and how that's going to be going and what day. Um, Especially with, like, a lot of shows coming out. And now all the shows are coming out at 6 o'clock instead of at the midnight release. So that's really hurting us, basically. Because, you know, before, I could go live from, like, 6 to 8 and then get like stop the live from eight to 11 uh and then go live again at midnight and then be able to do the watch parties but now everything's at six and then it's like you know it just kind of throws off everything 
So I'll have to figure out what's going on there. And maybe even a book club, a uh, comic book club might have to like replace Marvelous Monday in a way. And then a lot of the stuff that we kind of do on Marvelous Monday can be saved for like Super Fam Friday uh, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It'll probably be some switching around of stuff once we get into comic book club. But I just definitely want to get uh, this book club down um, a little bit more so I can kind of figure out the flow of how we do things. And then once we get into comic book club, I want to actually start, you know, especially because comics are you I, uh, comics are online in the form of like the Marvel Unlimited and all that type of stuff. I'm hoping I can actually show some scenes from comics while we talk about them and, and just kind of nerd out in that type of way. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that we can do with the comic book club uh, and all the book club in the future, depending on, you know, getting into graphic novels and and all that type of stuff as well. And then maybe one day we can even do book club on my book. I don't know if that would be, I don't know that maybe that's weird. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe that's weird. Maybe I, that's weird. I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, season three will likely be early to mid 2025. So you'd probably need to go through two or three chapters a week to not catch up. Maybe, uh, maybe four or five. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, like I said, we can, you know, it's like we can do the eye of the world and then uh, we can kind of go into um, the Brandon Sanderson stuff uh, with the next book. Like we can kind of go book by book to kind of get a break, not a huge break, but just, you know, just to kind of breathe off of one book from another, from one book to another, uh, you know, kind of like the off season, <laughs> like, like season one of from watcher to reader and then do, uh, season one of, uh, the Brandon Sanderson, whatever, uh, the stormlight archive, you know what I mean? Um, um, something like that. And then going back to see to, to book two, uh, and then going to book two of stormlight archive and, and you know what I mean? Kind of doing it like that. So that way we're able to have a little bit more time. And then maybe even after we, we even might, you know, go to do the other, you just, you know what I'm saying? Just, just spread through all the books and all of the stuff. At some point, book hype will take over show hype. I'm calling it, yo. <laughs> Y'all are like, yeah, yeah, you're like, whatever you say, sensei, whatever you say, we know that you're not going to be, you're not going to stop reading once you get to book two. <laughs> You can wait if it wasn't out already, but knowing that you can go to the store and buy it, you're not waiting. <laughs> oh, yo, for real, for real. Um, yeah, book hype will definitely take over. <laughs> that all of you guys saying, yep. <laughs> Don't forget the Wheel of Time graphic novels. Ooh, that's a good point. That's definitely something we could do as well. We could definitely do that too. I have to sneak some Sandman in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't. I have. I I haven't uh, watched the Sandman show because uh, I, I think that's what you're talking about uh, by Neil Gale, Ga Gaiman, right? Gaiman, think Neil Gaiman, something like that. I, I I haven't watched. I haven't watched that. Read that. I think that's who it's by. I hope I didn't just pull that out of the air. Um, I haven't watched that to its full completion. Pause. But I have heard about it, so I am down to uh check out i'm down to check out anything you know like i always say i love nerd stuff i love to nerd out and i love figuring out what you guys love uh because it just brings more stuff to me i mean you know uh i think it was you lbf that told me about the expanse and now that is literally my favorite literally my favorite show ever like that like the the expanse is hands down my favorite sci-fi show thing that has ever occurred and i am all the way here for it i i love that that'll actually have to be a part of book club at some point as well you know um and and i you know i'm down for all of it and i'm also down for expanding the channel into different channels and stuff too so everything can be concise once we get to that point in the future you know all that stuff is going to be popping <laughs> Switching over to Sanderson is a good call. Maybe after the Great Hunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, we're, yeah, we're definitely switching to Sanderson. And then whatever, like, and then we'll go to whatever you guys want. You know, that's what I, like I'm saying. We'll go back and forth from like, oh, 
um, you what you guys want to check out, and then what I want to read, which would be you know the 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 Sanderson stuff, and then what you guys want to read, and then back to what I want to read, which would probably be like the Expanse. Um, I'm kind of interested in Dune, but I'm more interested in Foundation. To be completely honest with you, in reading it at least, I'm more interested in reading Foundation than I am reading Dune. So that's probably on my uh, TBR uh, TBR list, to be honest. So, you know, yeah. Can always switch over to Expanse books after Dragon Reborn if you get there too fast. That's true. Expanse books are wild. Yeah, that show was definitely a top a top tier ten show awesome i just finished all the expanse books and now i'm reading the anthology of short stories whoa i didn't know there was a th anthology that's awesome i'm a huge dune nerd Ooh, okay i like the movies a lot i know zero about the books the show only goes through about six out of the nine books yeah the show keeps getting canceled man <laughs> god damn it the show keeps getting canceled it's pissing me off <laughs> We got we need three more seasons. Give me three more seasons of the expanse, please. <laughs> I'm sick of them canceling that show, bro. It's getting on my damn nerves. But with all that being said, I definitely appreciate each and every one of you amazing people that came out tonight to join us in our episode one of our From Watcher to Reader series. This, of course, will be in its own playlist with every episode, so you guys can go back and go to previous episodes that are in here. So far, there's two episode zeros, part one and part two, and this is our official part one. Next week will be part two where we cover uh, chapters 7 through 12 of The Wheel of Time, Eye of the World, and that will be on Wednesday, 12-20-23, uh, uh, right before the Christmas times, I'm super hyped to, to, you know, get into those and whatnot. Uh, this was a, an amazing Wheelie Wednesday. I guess Wheelie Wednesday is really just book club now. It's really not, a, I mean, it is Wheelie Wednesday, but it's more book club, but it's been a wonderful Wheelie Wednesday with you amazing people. I don't think we're going to be doing, uh, uh, super fam Friday this week. Uh, cause I'm doing a lot of stuff with, uh, my vain esports stuff. I've got it, got our game revision podcast that we're doing tomorrow. And then we're going to be also gaming, uh, as well, but maybe a little earlier in the day, I might, I might go live or do a show and talk about my book a little bit more. Um, I, I have talked about my book already here on, on the channel. And if you guys haven't seen that, uh, you can go and check that out. It's it's on the YouTube. Go and check. Uh, let's talk about my book slash manga slash comic. Uh, it's up there on the channel. If you want to know more about my world, my universe that I've been building uh, and that I'm going to start uh, capitalizing more on. Hopefully, hopefully I can get like a first draft out to, you know, any of you guys that would like to be beta readers uh, before, um, you know, the before the second quarter of next year, basically. And that, that's kind of my hope. Um, and you guys can check that out. And then we also are making a YouTube channel for my book. So that'll be something that you guys can go and check out as well. But I don't know if we're going to be doing Super Fan Friday. Those will probably be alternating. If you guys want to support me and all the stuff that I be doing and all that good stuff, go and do it. Uh, Mari Sue, I, I, we, I'm telling you, email us or something because we can help you get in that Discordia for sure. We need you in there now more than ever. When the world meeting you most, you vanish. You know what I mean? Um, this was fantastic. Everything I want in a Watt book club now to go back and watch from the beginning to see what I missed. Hey, I appreciate you. I know you be doing that, LBF. You're definitely the goat around here. I'm, I'm, I will go back to these and also timestamp them for everyone that goes back and watch them because I know they do. Uh, I didn't get to do it this time, but I mean last week for the last ones, but I'm going to try to get it done for everybody for sure. Um, so again, with all that being said, you guys are amazing. You guys have been amazing. You guys have been awesome. Uh, you can check us out on Marvel Bros to stay up to date with all things Marvel and everything pop culture. Uh, and you know... Uh, you can also follow our you our, uh, our TikTok and stuff like that because I'm kind of thinking about doing first impressions and a lot of stuff like that on there. Um, 
before we get here, but I don't know how I feel about that yet. But I want to do it, but I'm kind of not knowing how I feel about it yet. I like to do it after. Like, after I do this live, now I have all my thoughts concise a little bit more, and then I'll probably make a TikTok about all the stuff, about, you know, chapters one through six, and then put that out. Um, so definitely go check it out and support us over there. And then again, check me out on all social medias at Sensei Finito to stay up to date with all my thoughts, theories, and opinions on all the stuff that's going on. If you check me out on TikTok, I just put out a video talking about Uncle Ben from uh, Ben 10. And then another video talking about the, the now confirmed cast for just, uh, James Gunn's Superman Legacy. So you can go over there and tap in with that. Uh, definitely hope you do. And we got that weekly podcast going out. Like I said at the beginning, I am going to be trying to put out that Watt Bros podcast. That will be all of the things that we have done for Wheel of Time over the course of these last three years, I believe. And then that will be coming out weekly on wherever you get your podcast. And then Marvelous Monday is also wherever you get your podcast, too. So make sure you go show some love. Definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in, mobbing with us, chilling with us. It's been amazing. You guys are awesome. Um you guys are awesome, and I love you. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. You guys make this amazing to do, and I can't wait to continue Book Club and see what happens on this amazing and grand journey. I hope you guys have rest a good rest of your night. I'll say that for the last time. And then, as I always say, stay awesome, stay nerdy, and don't forget to stay marvelous. Excelsior. Sleep well and wake. If you guys would like to support Marlboros, all you gotta do is visit our website at www.marlboros.com and buy some merch. Represent the super fan. Or you can join our you Patreon like to get early access oh! to content, patron only scoops, nice giveaways, oh! private QAs, and oh! those sacred watch parties. Yo! We appreciate you guys. Welcome we'll catch you on the next one. Bros right Excelsior. Excelsior. On today's pop culture news update. And on today's pop culture news update. And on today's pop culture news update.